Welcome to The Last Word, episode number 302. This week we got a preview for Act 2, Solstice is Looking Hot, and a spicy bit of information about episode 2, Revenant's Changing Format. But before we talk about what's ahead, we need to talk about what's right in front of us, and that's our guest. After seeing... But after seeing he is a man after my own heart with his early gaming favorites, I knew today was going to be a great discussion. You know that guy who was walking around with a camcorder filming like everything when you were growing up? That's actually not too far off what our guest got to doing early on in his life. He took his hobby from his touring musician days, which we are definitely going to talk about, and he turned that into a lifelong career. From owning his own production company, having his own IMDb page... Our guest has been part of some of top studios like Naughty Dog, Infinity Ward, and now, of course, at Bungie. It doesn't matter what problem our guest is faced with, he thrives in the challenge of organizing chaos to deliver those on-screen moments that you'll never forget. So let's welcome a knight from Central Florida, the founder of Pony Ghost Productions, director's assistant on Atlas Shrugged, and now the director of cinematics at Bungie, a hunter who did some studying and passed his exams to become a scholarly warlock main in the modern era. The one, the only, Jimmy Myers. How you doing, sir? Hello, I'm doing great. Wow, you did your research. UCF nights and everything. That's great. <laughs> I like to get the, the deep cuts occasionally. It's always fun. The deep cuts, man. Thanks for joining us at the yeah, campfire, Yeah, thanks for having man. me. Good to talk to you. You know we got to start real quick yeah, with that little, little gaming history. We got to <laughs> jump right in. Because clearly you two share a very special game. So I'm assuming early NES, first console that was kind of in the household. And uh, give me some standouts along with one particular one that you both share. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I started playing games very early. My grandma had an Atari, so the grandkids would come over to her house and we'd play Pitfall. Um, that was Ooh, the big wow, one for me at the time, that. right? Yeah. Um, but then I played an NES for the first time at my friend Ethan's house as a very young kid, and he was playing Metroid, and I was blown away by the vibes. It was very creepy, it was very sci-fi, and I was hooked right away. Went home and immediately asked my parents for an NES, and <laughs> a year and a half later, we got one for Christmas. Split split present for me and my sister. Uh, nice. But yeah, so that that kicked off. Uh, you know, it came packed with Mario and and Duck Hunt. So obviously, we started there. The combo uh, pack. Oh yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, but eventually, got into some of the adventure games, some of the RPGs, and that really, really kicked off with Super Nintendo a little bit later. So that that brings us to my favorite game, which we had already talked about. I think Abantus's favorite game as well, yeah. uh, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, Chrono Trigger is one of the biggest reasons that I ended up working on games. No joke. Wow. So what wow. about yeah. that specifically? I mean, everybody has little pieces, whether it's, I mean, the soundtrack alone, I could just listen to, uh, you could play the battle theme and it just, it. I, I picture exactly where I am on the little like cliffside with the field, the little like frog looking guys, like it puts me straight into that. It like transports me back 30 years. What is it about you that ma took that game to drive you into helping make them now? Um, well, the music was kind of my biggest hook okay. as well, right? I was playing music at that time, and the music blew my mind. I'm still whistling 600 AD <laughs> passively. I'll be in the bathroom at a urinal whistling 600 <laughs> AD to this day. <laughs> it's on Spotify. Go listen to the soundtrack. It's while a we're very good place. track. <laughs> um, but I think for me, the thing that was so compelling about Chrono Trigger was you know, how you could influence the world in a way that I hadn't played a game where you could, right? Where you were time traveling and, and you would help a forest appear by helping Robo in, in that time period and that's, you know, that side quest. But the one that really blew my mind, I think most pronounced was Luca's side quest when you actually go back in time to the moment when her mother was injured. Yep. Do you remember this quest? I think so. It's been a minute. <laughs> You end up in this campfire sequence, which actually ties into some reference. That campfire sequence was a reference for Final Shapes campfire sequences. We'll get there. Whoa, nice. We got a um, deep cut. Nice. <laughs> it's true, though. Uh, but yeah, you end up going through a portal, and you have one chance to help Luca's mother in this flashback. And it's pure player agency. You're playing the game. You can save her, but it's incredibly difficult. It's just a little mini game. And when you fail, which you almost inevitably do the first time you try it, you feel responsibility for what happened. You're part of that regret that she has and, and the sort of like sadness that Luca had. I had never played a game where I was so in it in that way, where I felt responsible for a thing and that I could have changed something. That emotional resonance that you get from gameplay instead of just watching a linear 
piece of media was so profound to me that I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to make interactive stories. That's that's it. So, you know, it took a very long time for me to get to where I, I was doing that. But that was the dream very early on. The Inception seed was planted young, but it was uh, it was planted well, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. That's, oh, that's, that's awesome. so cool. Yeah, I mean, that, that game for me, as you said, the soundtrack, the depth of, like, the world, and then you got the ship going around, and the time travel, and the end of time, and all the different decisions, and the fact that you have something that happens in a main game where, you know, certain characters may not have the best fates and stuff. I'm trying not to spoil it if you've never played it, because please go play it. Um, all of those things, but as you said, it's those decisions, and then when you come back, and it's the idea of realizing if you play it again later, I can change this, or if you go plant the seed back in six million, whatever it is, I forget how far back time goes, you plant the seed in the sun, and then over the course of millions of years, it goes from like a moon to a sun, uh, it's like in the volcano, and it's been a little while since I've done this, but I know that's another one that can progress through time, and that's a side quest you can only do if you go back in time, take this piece here, then go forward and find this thing in the volcano. Yep, uh, that's the sunstone. Sunstone, Ooh. yep. Uh-huh. He remembers yeah. distinctly. I, I remember, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your, your memory's a little fresher than mine, it sounds like, but that's totally, totally fair. Uh, for me, also, one thing that stuck, and I don't know if I've really ever seen it as much, was just the combat, the combo attacks. I love the combo attacks, and for me, I don't know if I've ever seen it quite done that way. I still really need to play Sea of Stars because it's like, <laughs> speaks to me on every level. I just need to play that, and even the music kind of th- jumped right back in. But those combo attacks were some of the coolest things, especially on like SNES. I'd seen nothing like this and the big giant like orbs that appear on screen. And then you get the dark attacks coming from Magnus that come in. It was like, okay, what's happening? Um, No. Yeah, we can talk about this game for a whole other podcast. So I will move on. I apologize, everybody. Forgive the time. (laughs) I knew this was going to happen. This is your birthday. birthday. This is your moment. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I am 41 today. So anybody listening to this one. Yep. It is uh, another lap around the sun. We're all... uh, we're all middle-aged on this podcast today, so hopefully all of you enjoy that. <laughs> Kyle, no what do you got before we jump into all the Destiny stuff? Yeah, no, I just love hearing that that rich, you know, NES history. And obviously, I guess my question was, um, in, in, the, in the gaming space, you two things. One, did you stay in the kind of RPGs as the, the favorite genre? And then two, did you venture out into other consoles, you know, past NES? Oh, yeah, big time. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I think as most kids, I dreamed of owning every console. And at the time, it was the sacrifice of deciding which console to get every generation, right? There was a lot of stress in the 90s about those decisions. Uh, But later on, when I had my own income and I was able to buy my own consoles, I I was a multi-platform fella. Um, mm. and built my own PC in college and all nice. of that. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so we got into it. I think RPGs were what I gravitated to because of the stories. <clears throat> and at the time, RPGs were what was emphasizing story in that way for the most mm. part. Eventually, you got into these action-adventure games like at Naughty Dog that were telling really great cinematic stories. And I was so drawn to those. That's why I applied to Naughty Dog when I did. Nice. Um, and that was my entry to the games industry. Yeah, I mean, wow. this this day and age, we have the rare moments where you get to, and I think it's a unique thing that games can do, kind of as you said, they tell a story, but you get to, you get to be part of it, whether whether you're walking around, you're controlling the main character, yeah, God of War has combat, so, you know, Sinua's Sacrifice and Hellblade, you are like experiencing this stuff truly almost in your head if you have the headphones on for Hellblade. All of those moments now, it's like, as you see, it's like, I'm going to go watch, you know, Twisters in a week or two, and I'm going to have a blast watching the screen, but I can't be... <laughs> I'm not in it in the same way. And I think that's one of those things that the people who don't jump into games or they kind of like brush off what games as a form of entertainment do, they're unique to everything else because audio, visual, text, like it's, it combines so many for and art, so much art in all of these games that we get to see. And yours is a very important piece of that because you get to tell story moments in a way that we rarely get to see in games and they're some of the coolest and yeah, final shape. will get to some of those as well, for oh, yeah, sure. Def- but definitely gonna get yeah, to that. I mean, the fact that you mentioned naughty dog is a place you wanted to work makes perfect sense of what you're doing now. Cause I yeah. understand that. Uh, yeah. I got to get a quick little background though, because I teased it in the introduction. Uh, growing up, you were a touring musician. I just want to know what that was like. You also said you did it when you were 14. 
Yeah. Okay. I mean, we weren't, we weren't like full time touring at 14, to be clear, but we were, we were doing multiple shows in a row. We were traveling on weekends and in the summer we would travel for a week at a time wow. and play shows in the Southeast. I grew up in central Florida, as you indicated. Um, so a lot of touring in Florida at that time could happen just up and down the East coast of Florida. It's, it's six or eight hours of driving. And there were a yeah. bunch of these venues at the time where you could go play a hardcore show or a punk rock show mm-hmm. at like a JC community you know center in a <laughs> suburb um that was the kind of thing everybody's on the floor there's a mosh pit it's dirty it's smelly oh it's pretty amazing yeah I'm, but it was I'm also a really all great this. oh yeah no you can you can smell it you yeah. can imagine the smell <laughs> you, you can you smell it that's all you need to know it was authentic over here <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was it was a really great way to kind of broaden my perspective too i was in i was from a pretty small town so getting to visit bigger cities and meeting bands from other places sleeping on their floors and doing this was a pretty life expanding experience that i think opened up my like exposure to other people doing creative work really caring about making creative work and figuring out how to make it work right like it was this diy aesthetic of getting things done even if it was very rough and tumble and that still totally applies to video games absolutely Awesome, awesome. Love to hear uh, it. Yeah. So, I mean, the quick history, you were obviously touring musician and stuff. You started your own production company. And then, I mean, you've gone through Naughty Dog. You're at Infinity Ward. I mean, those two alone, without Ooh. Bungie, are two giant mammoths in the world of video games. Then you're just like, hold on, let me put the cherry on top here. And then you managed to join Bungie and you've been there for four years now. So, where did your kind of tenure, what, what was your... I guess, first stuff that you worked on at Bungie, just so we kind of have a timeline there before we kind of jump in. Um, I came in at the end of Witch Queen. So we were closing out all of the Witch Queen cinematics. A lot of them were on rails. Many of them had been shot already from a mocap perspective, but it was all of the finishing work, um, all of the post and then shipping the game. And then Mm -hmm. from there into the rest. Gotcha. Okay. Cog, you want to... Jump yeah, in. jump right in. Let's jump right in. You know, me, I always try to get perspective from the developer side. And, you know, us as gamers, we think we we know everything. <laughs> well, I guess a question for you is like being a creative director, dealing with many of the internal and the cross-functional teams. Like, what are the challenges that us gamers don't realize that you guys go through when trying to deliver cinematics, whether it be in the expansion, seasonal model, and now, you know, the episodic model that you guys have transitioned to? So I'm just curious about that process. Yeah. um, Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the biggest challenges are some of the most mundane sounding things. It's pretty funny. As you might expect, real time, real time rendering is its own ball of wax, especially in a game that's networked, where you're maintaining a group of people and a fire team in the network as you're loading in and out of levels, right? Um, One of our biggest challenges, and everyone on the cinematics team can tell you, is cloth. Cloth is like one of the biggest pains in the game because it's physics based. It can interact with certain things and you end up in these weird pickles where if you want somebody to sit down, like we did a lot of sitting down in final shape. That was challenging. It doesn't sound like it would be challenging, but it's incredibly challenging. You have to like wear like like feathers is causing problems when you sit down. My man, what's what's going on? Yeah, Yeah. But the gravity, the physics, the cloaks, (laughs) all of those pieces, they have to rest somewhere, right? So you got to deal right. with the way yeah, they... they're being influenced by the physics in the game, yep. right? But mm-hmm. if an explosion happens, do you apply a physics impulse to push the yep. cape at that moment? Does it work? Does it stick to something and start to get wild, right? You end up with a lot of very challenging scenarios with, with cloth um, where we have to manually pose a piece of cloth how someone is sitting so that it's not clipping through the ground or jittering because it's kind of fighting between I mean, two I've surfaces, seen that stuff right? In you've seen I've that, seen that stuff in exactly. game, yeah. Hunter We're clothes battling doing this whole thing. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah, wow. we struggle with the same stuff in the real time. But yeah. of course, you know, there are there are other challenges in every facet of the cinematics because it's the real time is only one facet of what we do. Right. CG, pre-rendered stuff is its own challenge because the timelines are very long. It takes a lot of time to get that fidelity. Um, the, just the render times take a long time. Mm-hmm. But we're generating assets that are slightly higher resolution so that we can render them in CG. And and so it's a slightly different asset pipeline than what we're doing in real time. Gotcha. And then similarly, motion graphics, same deal. They're just mm-hmm. different channels where we're making slightly different assets and working with 
whole different teams, usually in other countries, often in other countries anyway. Oh, wow. Um, so there are time zone differences. Yeah. Yeah. It's wow. So when you say motion graphics, are those what I poorly call the inkblot storyboards? Is that that's that? what I was about to ask? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Okay. And and the new um, 3D, the sort of diorama yeah. style. You've, yeah. you've seen yeah. some of those? Yep. Yeah. We started doing those as our standard for motion graphics now with the episodes. So that's our that's our motion graphics approach going forward with episodes. That's, so just for clarity, like for example, when uh, this may have been before your time, but I look at something like the story block thing with the creation of the witness. That what is that considered again? That what's that terminology mm. for that ink blot style? What is that exactly? That the motion graphic? So yeah, that's yeah. a motion graphics piece. So that's actually, motion graphic. Okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we actually call it a DSS internally, and no one agrees on what that acronym actually stands for. <laughs> <laughs> it is the it same was, acronym, but, but people have different things they call it. That's kind of exactly. great. Exactly. Nice. Gotcha. And just a, a quick follow up. So obviously, you have all these different styles, but once you got a CG, you know, mm-hmm. in game, and I guess I know you work with all these teams. The decision to deliver it like like say okay with this scene we want to do it in this style we want to do is that who is that who uh, you ultimately have to say on that is it collective with narrative i'm just curious with that process on this on how it's delivered which format is chosen yeah i mean i definitely influence that but it's very collaborative all the way through so many people have to dogpile on these um assets that we're all working together to coordinate where each thing starts and stops and hands off and um a lot of times, our limitations are what will define what we choose as a channel for narrative, right? If we want to show Guardian being involved, we need it to be real time so that we can feature your Guardian in their yeah. outfit, right? Yeah. We can't do that in pre-rendered CG because we can't account for the millions of combinations of gear that you could you know, potentially choose in CG. Um, but CG can do some bigger spectacle or build some exotic elements that we don't have in real-time terms in-game. And similar with motion graphics, right? Motion graphics is a great opportunity to do something like a flashback because we can show the golden age mm. in a way that hasn't been built in 3D yet, right? It's, it's pretty practical in some of those ways. But it's also each is suited to a different type of storytelling, right? The motion graphics are a bit more expositional and informative a lot of times. Not always, but they're also very historical, right? Like you're seeing something that you've never seen before. Um, CG is I mean, often about spectacle. Rhythm is probably the prime example of that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stuff, I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the spectacle is kind of saved for some of those CG pieces or the very detailed emotional performances, which we do... We do real-time and CG, but a lot of times you get that fidelity, that subtlety in CG. It really lets you see the regret in someone's eyes or something like that, right? Yeah. So, so all of them went through a lot of that in this, this particular <laughs> season. So, I, yeah, we sure saw did. the teams work extremely hard on that part. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, for you having all, you know, the experience of, you know, as I said, your assistant to a director, you got to see some cinematic, you got to work on some music videos, you've got your... Naughty Dog experience, and you appreciate the games from Chrono Trigger and everything in between. When you come into something like a movie, it has a start, it has an end, you're going to develop a project and you're going to push it out the door, and eventually, you know, kind of put a bow on it and you are eventually going to be done. Destiny is a living project. You came in, as you said, towards the end of Witch Queen. There's eight years of stuff or seven years of stuff behind you. How, what is the balance like for you to both honor that, but also know that either you want to take some of that, incorporate, build on, improve. It's like you're going to respect what's there, but how do you make it your own and how do you find that balance, if that makes sense as a question? Yeah, it does. Um, It's definitely, it requires some strategy. Um, There's a lot of intention in how we approached that. Um, In my mind, tonally, you know, everybody has their own set of influences inherently, right? My own pathos was built by whatever I was watching as a child. The random viewing of Predator 2 on Saturday after cartoons, right? Ooh, or whatever. Fifth um, element way too many times in high school. So. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it, I think it requires a kind of gradient of tone. That's, that's the way I was trying to approach it when I came in. Um, I had different ideas for how we could approach some of these scenes, how we could get emotionally personal with these characters, get a little bit vulnerable in a way that I hadn't seen exactly in Destiny. But instead of just hatching that right away and abruptly changing styles, we were injecting these moments in the seasons that we were making leading up to Final Shape. You know, we were 
working with all of the narrative team and they all had desires for their own versions of that. So we're collaborating on it and sort of strategizing about how we're introducing these new styles and takes on things. But luckily, Destiny is such a diverse franchise that you can play a little bit in, you know, a pirate season and and get a little bit of swashbuckling and it doesn't feel out of place versus something that's a little bit more dramatic and has a lot of gravitas. Uh, Is there any, like, piece? So, I'm trying to remember all the seasons in order. It was like, uh, you say swashbuckling and stuff. Was that stuff you were part of? Like, it was Mm -hmm. haunted right there, too? Yeah. Yeah, Okay. Because the first season I worked on was, um, I think of them in numbers. It was season 16. So, it was the one that shipped with Witch Queen. Witch Queen. Gotcha. 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 Um, Gotcha. Gotcha. Haunted was one of those, I feel like, was, as you kind of said, an emotional departure of what we're used to. Because we did get some backstory. But we had mm-hmm. the kind of in-game pieces were a crow, and then they're kind of getting their next week they get their resolution in the back and forth. Um, when you work with narrative to kind of have these moments, is there anything that you've pitched? You're like, I really want to take this like character this way or show this thing, and they're just kind of like, that's not really gonna work. Or how often do how often is it like, hey, here's this thing, and then you only get half of it, or have you like gone to narrative and brought something to them about a character. And they're like, Oh, that actually would be something we didn't thought of any, like a, any example of that where you can think of where you, like the teams kind of surprised each other. Yeah. Um, let me think of a specific example, but I can say examples of both of those things have happened all the time. It's a very okay. collaborative process. Narrative knows the incredibly deep fiction of destiny much better than I do. Even though I've been playing the game for 10 years, <laughs> they know every detail of the lore books that have been indicated and how something was described in a, you know, a piece Ooh. of lore that's attached to a gun in a way that I am not as intimately familiar with. So there's a lot of that. Um, but there's also a lot of, counter pitching back and forth it's like being in a band it's very Mm. creatively fulfilling to come to the table and be like okay like for example haunted i was really excited about this um ritual that we could show where eris starts to float into the air yeah Uh, yeah Uh, yeah (laughs) exactly yeah Yeah, so (laughs) that was the first season that i was contributing to from the beginning and i was collaborating with narrative on it they knew they wanted to do some kind of ritual with that giant mask, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah. there weren't specifics on the blocking of the scene. And so I was pitching this very much Green Knight influenced aesthetic of, okay. of there's this really great sort of witchy ritual at the beginning of Green Knight that that we used as a comparison for the mood that we would want to hit. It's obviously a very different scene otherwise. <laughs> um, but the idea of her floating into the air and all of this stuff, sometimes narrative might not know what we're capable of in real time mm. scenes, whether we can have someone float, does that break the cloth? Does it do all these things that we know are inconvenient? Sense, yeah. So we do a lot of back and forth of what makes fictional sense, what is practically possible and will look good. Mm. How many lights can we put into a scene and still have beautiful shadows, right? All of these mm. details are, are in effect. So we're collaborating with everyone who's a specialist to find the sweet spot. What, nice. What's the proudest thing that you guys fought for? collaborate that you you personally are proud of that you fought for that came into the game oh man i don't I, i'm not comfortable taking full credit for anything actually because it, it always <laughs> requires team, somebody else you and your you team, and the team. Uh-huh. <laughs> but i i feel very proud of the lantern sequence at the end of final shape that oh. was one and the kids right so the kids and the the baby the little war, war beast, beast yeah all of those things were an, a very early idea that we pitched as cinematic concepts they aren't in game anywhere else um but we got them through and and got that moment where you got to kind of reflect on your 10-year journey with those lanterns rising up that was very much a series of not battles but sort of passion pushes to to achieve it and and i'm really excited that we did oh that was awesome it was such a again that we're not spoiled too much for those who haven't done final shade but it was really a very cool emotional send-off after such a big high stakes moment and I thought it was cool. Yeah, I, I remember that mo- moment distinctly. And I was like, yeah, oh, that's interesting. I've never really seen them do that. <laughs> like, I was yeah. like, okay. And then obviously, you know, the, the the main, the Vanguard passed that amongst each other. And Ikora has the line of, you know, we should, you know, kind of celebrate this right now. So, yeah, that was actually dope. Pretty dope. Yeah, yeah. We, we got an opportunity to spend more of that sort of slice of life time with these characters in Final mm-hmm. Shape, where we really got a bit more intimate than we typically do. And we have that sort of mundane moment where you're sitting on the edge of a building with them. That yeah. feels a little, you know, it's, it's, it, it is very anime influenced. There was a little bit of a kingdom hearts two influence in there too. If you're oh, paying attention. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I can see. I can see. So I, I got I got a nice question for you. Yep. We gotta we gotta have some real talk now, Jimmy. We gotta have some real mm-hmm. talk now. This is the part. So, you know, obviously coming into the final shape. There's a ton, in my opinion, there's a ton of pressure on you guys to deliver, right? After light falls, let's say less than positive reception. So my question is like, what did you and the team learn from this feedback? What were some key points of focus, if you could share, on how you deliver the narrative or how it can be improved cinematically moving in to Final Shape? I think we already had a lot of ideas formed in what we hoped but at the ending of a 10-year saga would look like. So it wasn't necessarily that feedback from a prior release was directly informing those ideas. I think it was more shaping how much we knew we needed to execute. We already had that sense of pressure on ourselves. Everybody at Bungie loves this game. Like They're working on this game because they love it. So everyone had their idea of what the end of a 10 year saga would look like how it would impact them emotionally. And part of the reason I think we found such resonant moments in the game is because people were getting to pitch those into the product. Right. Um, I think one of the things that we benefited from was an emphasis on how important the story would be. Um, There was a realization that that story needed to be really well told. um, And that allowed us to have a bit more iteration than we would typically have and really try things out and, test it with our team or with play testers and see how they were feeling and, and get to try some things to really land it. That was super helpful. Mm. And I guess the, the quite obviously we knew there was a delay initially, like how, realistically, how much does that, that extra time really help the team, you and the teams, you know, because obviously what a shout out Tom for Farns- Farns- we had at the campfire before. And we thought, um, was it beyond, beyond light? Was it into the light? Uh, prior to the expansion was excellent. I was like, for, for them to come together in this short period of time and to be able to deliver that, I thought was amazing to allow Final Shape. So I guess, like, how much could you realistically impact with that level of delay, if you understand the question? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would say the opportunity to iterate, like I was talking about, is what okay. that enables, which in game terms can be very impactful, right? Like if, if you're getting a second, third, fourth chance to try something and polish it and perfect it, it's a big deal. Now, these teams are super used to quickly polishing and perfecting because our timelines are tight and consistent and we're always putting something out. So we make use of time very readily if we get a little bit extra. Um, gotcha. But yeah. Extra, extra months did, did help out because you landed the plane, man. <laughs> Thank you, man. you. You guys landed that thing. But yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you asked because I've always wanted to get a, a sense of it. Like, oh, you know, is, how much can you do in that short period of time? But it seems fairly significant to really polish and, and iterate. So that's Yeah, exactly. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you know, if if most artists had their... Um, their wish granted, we would have endless time exactly. to never finish anything. <laughs> There's a <That's> producer <laughs> somewhere saying, we actually have to hit the go button sometime. <laughs> Some point. That's part of your job. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So for me, when I played through the Final Shape campaign, now you, I might be wrong in this one. I almost, this is probably an exaggeration. It felt like the Final Shape campaign had more cinematics than I swear the last 10 years. To me, it felt like every mission had in-game cinematic where you're having the dialogue around a campfire or a discussion between stories, then actual cinematics, then it felt like so much was done in that fashion. Is it because you knew, is it because the way the story was delivered, that it was this linear destination or it was here, you had like a setup and you knew there was going to be a discussion or was it the fact that as kind of Cognito said, was it the fact that it was the 10 year culmination and you wanted to put more in than normal? What, what brought on this just absolute influx of more storytelling, more cinematics than I think we've than I've ever seen in this game in like a 10 hour campaign? And I loved it. But I was like, what what allowed I guess what allowed you guys to get so much more in there than I feel like you've ever done before? A couple of things. Um, I think we were able to emphasize how important it is to spend time with characters like I was touching on earlier. Um, sometimes. From a pacing perspective, just having those quiet moments where you're sitting with them and Cade's playing a harmonica at a campfire and you're just feeling in the place goes such a long way. And so to end this saga, to have all of these very resonant emotional moments with all of these characters, sometimes it does just require time, right? You just need a footprint to spend time with characters. Um, 
And, you know, like you touched on, I think we we had the opportunity to emphasize story in this release, right? Um, Destiny is very much a gameplay-focused product. The gameplay is what is so good about this game. It's what keeps people coming back for thousands of hours. But the story is what contextualizes it and makes people care on an emotional level. When you're closing a 10-year chapter and starting a new one, you need to be able to spend that time with the people. Um, but you're right. The runtime, I think the full runtime was even longer than um, Red War, which was probably the longest okay, prior. Yeah, so I'm not totally crazy. <laughs> no, no, I think you're right. It felt like it. Um, and the other kind of question into that, and you kind of covered it earlier, so this may be, but it was like, when is it more of a bandwidth or is it more of kind of what you're doing in game? As you said, it's like sometimes it's CG, sometimes it's in game. And when you have those two that almost kind of one goes into the next, where do you decide to draw the line or what pieces of the story do you feel, you know, when it comes to the CG moments versus the end game, how do you divide like a scene up between the two to know that both are going to deliver what they need to? Yeah, I mean, I think I touched on that a little bit earlier when we want to feature the Guardian and make sure that you feel part of this story. Real time is the highest priority. Mm-hmm. So typically that's the biggest decider is trying to make sure that we can feature the guardian. Like obviously the end of the story featuring the guardian was of utmost importance, right? You had to be part of that or else it right. would not have felt right. Your your ghost wouldn't have been involved because it wasn't your ghost, right? Yeah. It's it's just not the same. Um for CG, we're able to do some more exotic things, right? These visions and these kind of strange abstract effects that we were able to do are much harder to achieve in real time yeah. um, in practical terms. We can do them, but it's much more costly from a resource perspective. Mm. And we can have another set of artists at a CG studio that we're collaborating with pouring their time and passion into these CG scenes and how all of these things are happening. A good example of that is how Cade's vision, when when he's inside the Traveler, and we're seeing all of these light refractions that are shifting into different viewpoints of different characters and we're seeing those those guardian tenets in in real time um that's something we could do in game but we're transporting you between maps and there are memory issues when you jump from one map to another there are these very so practical technical limitations. pieces that come into it too there are <laughs> and we can overcome those we, we have creative ways of dealing with them but we are afforded more opportunity to get abstract and strange and interesting and visually exciting when we choose that channel yeah for those I, moments and I think when it comes to, I mean, it's the moment that brought me to tears. I'll say it. Um, I don't have to spoil it, but I think we all know what that moment is. Yes. That was in game because that was our guardian. And that moment, I think, as you said, as costly as it may have been for the team to build that in game with what that required, you knew it had to be in game. So that's one of those moments where it's like, there's a giant like gold star on this one. It's like, I don't care what this one takes. This is going to be, is that one of those where it's like, have to have it kind of thing is that because that moment was special for everybody i think oh yeah that was definitely obviously one that we (laughs) emphasized heavily um and the animation team especially poured a ton of love into like every nuanced detail of the facial expressions when you watch cade and the sort of second thoughts in his eyes and all of those things that read that's that's the like loving hand of an animator um Mm -hmm. on top of the loving performance of an actor yeah yeah, it's, it's um, the whole package. Small side thing. I know we didn't mention getting to work with Nathan Fillion. How much interaction did you get with him? I mean, I've watched Castle Rookie like I've enjoyed his work for so long now. It's like I him coming back had to be special. But for you, how much did you get to work? Did he come in or was it all like voice kind of sent in or it's it's all voice? Yeah. Okay. Um, for the entire 10 year um, history of Destiny. When they first cast Destiny, there were people who played body and people who voiced. That's um, right. I, so saw, the those, I saw, of the saw some of those tweets. That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. So Richard Sloniker plays Kate as a body. <coughs> Brandon uh, Brandon O'Neill plays Zavala as a body, um, actually. Okay. And um, Allison Kalavis usually plays Ikora. But we got an opportunity to PCAP more on this release than we have previously. Um, Mm. Again, part of it was the emphasis on the storytelling, but that campfire scene where you, you leave Zavala's cabin and everybody's sitting around that campfire. We PCAPed everyone together around a fire for real. And they were playing Mm. off of each other in a way that we often don't get to do. A lot of times we shoot on a smaller mocap stage and we have two actors and then two actors and we're shooting 
both sides of a scene and it works great. We do a lot of planning. But when you get those little emotional nuanced responses between people, it really sings. That's awesome. Cog, that you want to awesome. lead it? Yeah. I know where you're going. <laughs> you know where I'm going. We got to get there. Your main event, man. I mean, look, Final Shape, obviously you guys, extremely well, positive, critically you know, response, in my opinion, and in most of the community's opinion, kind of currently labeled the best expansion in Destiny history. But we got to talk about this thing you guys did. This thing, and we got to talk about the existence missing, man. Um, for me, it's not only one of my favorite cinematics uh, in general, pre and post excision mission. And in my opinion, this is your Avengers Endgame moment. <laughs> like yeah. this is the moment. So can you tell us, you know, how difficult it was to get this scene? Because this is literally a culmination of almost every character, you know, in, 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 in the series existence. Then we're talking motion capture. You're talking CG. You're talking all of this emotional music. Keith David's performance before the thing, right? So, like, tell me how difficult that was to put it together. Because you guys really, we've always, I always felt like, always wanted a moment like that from Destiny. We felt like, like ah, we were building to it for so long too with all the different right. races and now we got allies and we're like, is this going to happen? And then we were all just knocked on our butts, just absolutely yeah. blown away. How difficult it was to pull it off because I thought from a technical standpoint, there's really no way they probably could do something like that. So to see you guys execute that, I was just like, wow. Like I was away when the mission launched and I, I was in LA for Summer Games Fest and my friends were like, Budgie effing killed it. You let me know when your flight's back, because we're <laughs> waiting for you so we can play said mission. Because I was I stayed spoiler free. I did the campaign and I stayed spoiler. So please, I'm, enough rambling for me. Tell us how difficult it was to do excision the Cinemax pre and post and just that whole thing together. Sure. Uh, well, the pre cinematic was definitely the more challenging one, just because of how many components were involved. And again, we're working with a huge group of artists who are all contributing. Uh, that scene in particular was handled by uh, two really awesome directors who work with me, Stee and Nick in England. Um, they have a company called Ubik Films. Um, we all shot mocap together in LA um, at a place called Rouge. And we shot, I mean, we shot multiple days of of extras walking and you know guardians landing and and Keitel arriving and you know we we shot every elixir run right floating up there exactly and a lot of this stuff we had a stunt day where we were shooting things like the wire work that we needed for zavala's big jump we did oh, that with nice. with wires That's you, awesome. there, there's a real person jumping <laughs> with wires same day we shot uh those mini scorn um, in the scene with oh, Kate yeah. and Crow. Yes, yes, um, yes. That was the stunt rigger's son, who is 10, running on all fours and doing wire work, like flipping through the air. It, it's amazing. If we ever show behind the scenes of this stuff, oh, you totally need to post this fun. stuff. Like, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry Seriously. to our PR team if they don't want to. But yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it and apologize later. That's how that goes. <laughs> but yeah, I will say, like, all of those components. They were challenging, but I actually don't think the scene itself was challenging because we knew what it should be. You know, I, I had an opportunity to work with the narrative team. Uh, Hannah on the narrative team, shout out, was a super awesome partner in working on the script. And, you know, we knew that it needed to feel like the Destiny endgame. And it couldn't just be endgame, right? It needed to be what we need from a scene like that, like who we need to have reminders of. Um, but Zavala being that focal point for everyone Ooh. in this franchise Talk made so much sense, right? Mm -hmm. Him kind of softening and talking about the vulnerabilities and losses of everyone. That's the theme of this whole story, kind of overcoming those losses and accepting them. That's what Cade had been teaching us this whole time, right? Mm -hmm. So I would actually say we, we hit what we felt was very effective in that scene early, even in the mm. storyboard phase, because we knew what it needed to be. Whereas there was more subjectivity with the second scene. We were playing with quite a, a few different permutations of, of the final scene, which again, I won't spoil for folks who haven't played it. But that scene went through quite a few iterations to get right, because it's it's so vulnerable emotionally too, right? Like, Absolutely. It's, you have to toe a very fine line to land that without getting 
too sentimental or, you know, potentially cheesy and really letting it be something that feels emotionally truthful. That's hard. It's really hard. And you need other people's perspectives to know if you landed it because eventually you lose some objectivity, in my opinion. Right. Oh, no. hundred. Yeah, you're too close to 100%. it. Yeah. You can't see it. Yeah. No, the, yeah, it's like for the excision opening and then the fin- it's the emotions you go through because all of a sudden you're in there with 12 people and then you have the cinematic opening with all the different parties involved and then you go through the mission and then you're I'm just you're already just on an emotional high and I think this is where you probably whether it's testing or collaboration to come into like the the perfect roller coaster pitch and speed to go from the high and then to hit the bottom but then just barely bring it back out at the bottom and it's just like I was not quite full weepy, but I was I was tearing up and stuff. You you had me on the edge and it was just the and I couldn't have asked for like to get Nathan Fillion back for a moment like that. And it's just those little pieces of somebody, you know, it's like you love all of the actors. It's like just but it it just fits so perfectly with him delivering that moment for me. I don't know why it hit just extra hard with just with him there and but it was like i think that line will now live probably somewhere on your studio wall is guardians make your own fate it's like mm-hmm. that's one of those that is like yeah it's yeah the, his choice and it was just like damn <laughs> yeah that, that was fine look we I, wanted, I want you to <laughs> really send this back to the team like seriously because how well executed everything leading up to that as well as Let's be honest. We knew campaign. We're going to fight the witness. We get it. Right. You know, at the end of that, it's like, yeah, all you did was. <laughs> right? And then obviously a raid. So in my mind, I'm like, OK, the conclusion of this will be in the raid. And you guys are very coy about how you would handle that. But to have this mission. Right. And then you have the emotional stakes. You have these performances. Another thing I want to give you credit is something that I haven't really seen you guys done. You did it a few times, but I'm talking about oh, way back since Curse of Osiris, where Osiris is fighting with you during the Panoptes fight. Right. The thing that makes it even more special is during the battle. They yeah, are on the exactly. field with you. Seven and I'm calling out. <laughs> wanted Destiny to do that. How difficult was that in game? Because this is like t- 12 players. Like, I keep. I'm pretty sure there's PS4s this. that are just exploding all yeah, over the I, world. How did you do it? Like, technically, I mean, a 12 player yeah. activity with all of this going on yeah. and mechanics, raid like mechanics yeah. with a cinema and people with you. Please tell the team, give them all. Well, praise, damn. but please, but you I guys want you also to go set a bar now too. that you have to do like yeah. more frequently, by the way. Just that for insane, insane. <laughs> but please let, let me know about that in game now part. I mean, the, the teams that contributed to that in game part were were vast, right? I think design, engineering, everybody had a hand in pulling that off. And my team, our contribution to that component was really the connective tissue, right? We have the cinematics on each side. But the other side of my team, which is called the narrative performance team internally at Bungie, is those in-game vignettes is what we call them, where you're on the stick, two characters are talking, and you can walk around them. The team that worked on those contributed to all of the player characters, or I mean the uh, the NPC characters fighting with you. Oh, wow. So they did a lot of work to get them in place and time them correctly so that you had these reveals and you hear Savathun when she appears and you hear, you know, Mithrax coming in and you look over and you see Scurvy in the distance. All of that was a massive undertaking. It's, it's extremely difficult balancing just memory with that many players and that much <laughs> going on. People much smarter than me were handling that. Hey, um, that's, that's everybody has that's, their specialty. So that's exactly. totally fine. Yeah, yeah. It was a massive team effort. But again, it was one of those things that everyone knew needed to happen. That was something that was Ooh. that was essential, right? You have to feel you can't just see endgame. You have to play endgame, right? It doesn't you gotta feel it. That's yeah. what games are for. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you you nailed that. Like I said, I just wanted to I, I can't stop blowing it enough about that and, and the the way you guys landed that. And and shout out to the overall decision to allow from the the general player base to be able to do it. Because let's be honest, I love to raid. Don't get me wrong. I am team raid all day. But I I felt it was the correct choice to have this be, you know, that the the whole community can come together to finish, you know what I'm saying, in in the job, so to speak. But well done. Well done. I think in my opinion, look, you guys have always great moments, but that's peak destiny. That's peak 
Bungie and shout out to the whoever decided for the 12 player activity. Like that's insane to me. <laughs> you I don't know. Like you say, E PS4 is somewhere. No, I'm saying like, PS4 is Xbox off One's deal, like, on fire Xbox in the background. Yeah. Hold it so the past <laughs> generation, God bless. I don't know how <laughs> you guys are able that's to do some that. technical Absolutely. magic and Absolutely. who knows what. Um, and networking on launch, but continue. Oh, truly, yeah. <laughs> No, it's like, it sounds like we could probably talk to you for hours, which I'm glad we're having a great conversation, but I know you got places to be, so I do want to respect your time. Absolutely. Quick question before you go, because this will be a little off Destiny, but before we finish, from your cinematic eye, what are a couple movies that have inspired you in your career from moments uh, you've seen or the way a director handled the shot or just anything that has left a massive impression on you in how you approach your day-to-day work? Sure. Um, or even games it's, too, it's, but you know, either. Well, yeah, yeah, games too. But a lot of times, what I like to do is kind of boil back to whatever the the primary influence was, even with a movie that I loved. Um, so early on in my filmmaking career, which was you know that was a decade just on its own, um, a lot of my influences were music video based. Um, I was making music videos, and I was super inspired by the Spike Jones, Michelle Gondry, Mark Romanek. You know, the, there's this satellite films era of music videos that was pretty exciting in the 90s. And they were doing very creative, visually interesting, kind of strange, abstract visuals. And I was always very inspired by that. I integrated a lot of that into my work in music videos. And we also did a lot of practical effects. It was a lot of things. There's a video that I did for a band called Under Oath a long time ago uh, that was underwater. And we built a set that we were lowering into the water oh like, to show a house <laughs> flooding. And I was in scuba gear operating a camera underwater. It's we we did a lot of very zany production choices back then. Um, I think those those influences combined with the more cinema side of things. Paul Thomas Anderson is a huge example for me. Magnolia, uh, Punch Drunk Love. Punch Drunk Love is a very interesting one actually because it's it's a comedy, but it's extremely abstract and unsettling there's a sequence where this semi truck abruptly appears um, when he's looking at this instrument that it's like a I can't remember what it's called it's not a vibraphone but uh it's a piano looking organ type instrument on the street and it's horrifying in a way that you can't quite explain in a very similar way to how hereditary handles horror actually oh. which was another <laughs> major recent influence for yep. me but at the same time, one of my primary influences from a filmmaking perspective is Spielberg, right? Like Jurassic Park was like, I was like for me. I was going to say Spielberg, Jurassic Park still holds up for the yeah. practical. So it's like you beat me to it. But. No question. Yeah. And I mean, you can tell, I think, when you're watching the cinematics in Destiny that it is a combination of those things. There's the the fun and games spectacle of Spielberg and the blocking that he tends to pull off so well. But we get into these abstract, dreamlike, strange places that were ultimately influenced by Fellini back in the day, Eight and a Half, and some of those um, more stylistic Italian movies. Um, but those influenced Paul Thomas Anderson and then influenced me. So, yeah. The moment, yeah, it was like the last one. I think when I thought the campaign was going to be way more than I had expected, the moment where you're walking on the light yes. in the campaign, I was like, whoa. Yeah, what's going on? I, mm-hmm. I had no idea what to expect, what was going on, and then I kind of started to realize what was happening. That moment when you say the abstract could not probably define that better than what that is, because how do you actually put, how do you make the light something tangible? And then mm. somehow you guys managed to show a little bit of that. And it was in that moment, I'm going, oh, we're in for something good. And I was blown away the whole way through. So, uh, yeah, thank you. I wanted to say thank you, the team, and truly the entire studio, because from us and anybody who you've probably seen on Twitter, reviews, feedbacks, and anywhere else, we are all very thankful that this 10-year saga, you guys did did not only land the plane, you landed the plane so well, you're like, oh, I guess we're on the ground now. It was so <sighs> smooth, and but like the emotional journey was so worth every minute of it. And I don't know if we can all thank you enough because yeah. it's like, as I said, I'm 41 today, so it's been a quarter of my life and yeah. it means a lot. And I thank you guys yeah. a ton. Yeah, you guys, well, the police. Oh, I was going to say it meant a lot to us too. I think it means a lot to us that the community connected with it. That's why we do this, right? So, you know, admittedly i spent the next week after we shipped this thing watching people cry and react to these scenes that's that is incredibly rewarding 
when you when you're making stuff for as long as I've been making stuff to watch the thing you made work yes. well on people. It's so thank you and thank you to everybody who played it. Um, it's it's very much a two way street on this stuff. We're making it for this reason. So when it works, that's yeah. very joyful for us. Beautiful. It's beautiful stuff. It, it, that to me is like the beauty of video games. And you know, I, I'm the type of person that you know I try not to get too high, too low. I knew what the stakes were. You know, obviously we've been playing this damn game for so long, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's like, okay, the, the culmination of a 10-year journey, what does that look like? I have to be realistic. There's a lot involved. So I'm, I just want to see it through. But to like E said, to see it exceed expectation in this way, to have this emotional response, it's so cool. And like, you know, this podcast was formed because of Destiny, you know, one of my other podcasts, Iron Lord's podcast, formed because of it. It, it was such a journey with this game. And again, thank you so much. Thank the team so much. This is is really like I, I can't I can't I can't give enough praise because I, I really felt you guys not exceeded every metric and expectation and really it felt it felt rewarding it felt worth it you know what I'm saying and I, I was that's probably my proudest destiny but I'm like yeah now what <laughs> <laughs> talk about Bungie now <laughs> I've always go ride for y'all and, and, and that was I couldn't I I, I tear up I tear up I, I couldn't think that you would exceed it in that fashion on all levels you know what I mean Kudos to the team. Yep. Well, thank you so much. And thanks for having me on. And we're back. What's and up, everybody? Back. Magic of editing and other such things. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that interview. We had a blast. And as we kind of joked with him afterwards, uh, we could have talked to him for a while. Yeah. So that was fun. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And maybe hopefully in the future we'll be able to have him back because, yeah, the passion of movies and games oh. and stuff, it's real. So that was, yeah, that was awesome. He's awesome. He is awesome. Just to see... All the things, you know, just learning and 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 just seeing all the different aspects that are involved with the game. Always, it's always cool, and just having his personality, which is again, we could have talked. We all be show restraint, restraint, y'all. Like we could have talked to this gentleman. I was, for a I was long trying to time. squeeze this as close to forty five minutes, yeah. and we went over, but we got him to his meeting, so <laughs> we did our best. I was like, no, no, we got to wrap, wrap, come on. And it was just like, so you always try and respect your guest time, especially in that instance. But I think the mm -hmm. the vibes were good. It wasn't just like, yes. hey, I gotta go because. You know, if you ask one like final little question, then he goes on for a couple minutes and I'm oh, looking at bro. the clock. I'm like, uh, OK, <laughs> yep, but he's doing it. So, you know, it's like we're there. Yeah. But yeah, just watching the clock is good. Um, no, oh, just absolutely. learning about man. When he said the campfire was interview influenced by the Chrono Trigger campfire, I was like, it's over. Yo, done. that was, that was like crazy a 30, right there. 30 year coming full circle moment. I was like, I'm good. I've played yeah, the two like games. You was, you was definitely that was the best birthday gift for you right <laughs> I there. Like, I was like, yo, that's wild. <laughs> But yeah, man, I I love I love to hear that. And then obviously the um the excision. I needed excision. I needed that. Oh no, I'm you glad he went as deep on it as he did because yeah. that is such a it's a culmination for everybody. And you said it extremely well to say of what it meant to everybody. It wasn't it was outside of the raid, but still had the weight of kind of a raid and mm -hmm. the way they described, you know, the moments that we got to experience pre and post and all of those things. No, it's it was a lot of it's kind of one of those, you know, gold star moments, as I said. It's like the mm -hmm. other one that made me cry. It's like those moments. They had to happen, and even if it did take a lot, whether it was the time allotment or whatever it took, they knew those had to happen. And it's cool that they were able mm -hmm. to pull those off because yeah. that's what allowed Final Shape to hit the way it did, I think. Yeah, yeah, and the, obviously, you know, narrative team, you know, the collaboration there, them – I don't want to say like it's like a, it's it's not push pull, but for them to say, oh no, we could do this. We could have, you know, when he was talking about season of the witch and um, what you call Eris, you know, floating, yeah, we floating could go in the extra air. with it, yep. yeah, like oh man, that was super dope. Just hearing that kind of stuff and the collaboration and like the uh, what, what was it, motion graphics? That's what it's called now. The, uh, the term, yeah, motion I call graphics. it storyboard, but yeah, I like yeah, that. Storyboarding. I, like that yeah, I don't know, ink blots mm -hmm. obviously the wrong thing. That's a Rorschach test, but yeah, um, but yeah, storyboard, motion graphics in games and then like CG for the true like pre-rendered without Guardian. Yeah. And that's kind of the big thing. If your Guardian's going to get featured mm -hmm. and it's the detail that we got with Cade, that was oh. an expensive scene, but they Bro. knew it had to be. And that's what I thought I had that to, thing. I had to, it was crazy. I had to restrain myself. I want, you know what I wanted to get into too was um, uh. we, we obviously creation of the witness was before him because I was yep. a couple of seasons, but the witness. Well, that was deep, the, right? Or, deep was yeah, the witness. Deep he was, was the there creation. for that, though, because that oh, was he was there for that. Okay, cool. Yeah. But then we didn't even get into the bag with the actual campaign when the dissenters, you know, shout out to DJ. <laughs> Talk to the, what is it? Join oh, the man. Darkness and you will see. We didn't even get, get that. We didn't even get to the greatest. <laughs> Bro, we had to, I had to show so much restraint. Oh, no, we got 45. We did. I got to go to We stuck to our questions. My plan actually helped. I will say, normally I will tell you guys the podcast has got. 
not even a plan most of the time. It's mm-hmm. just kind of like what's going on in the week. And we generally know what's going on. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I had specific questions that I wanted us to kind of get through. Yeah, and we, we had to barely made those work. And it, it kind yeah. of happened. We also do so have a twit. Have, yes, we do have a twit. Okay, cool, cool, cool. What's going on with the twit? Live professional podcasting. Yeah. Uh, so we have new battlegrounds and echoes. You'll journey to the center of Nessus in Act 2 with three new battlegrounds. While unraveling the mystery of disappearing Radiolaria, you'll fight through hordes of enemies, through bosses as you track the source. With a continuing story, each battleground will start with the last one left off. So this is a little mm. more of that linear storytelling they're doing, kind of the way Final Shape was actually built to mm-hmm. kind of venture deeper and deeper or travel farther through a destination, which I kind of like. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got another rocket sidearm. This one's going to be solar this time. Oh, let's go. Let's go. The call is in trouble now. Now you're giving me a soul joint, and you know where I'm going for. I'm going for that hill clip incandescent. You know how we do it. You got an here. arc heavy burst, which is my four. No, mm. two burst. Two burst pulse rifle. And it's an arc pulse rifle coming for mm. the. You know, looks like um, it's aggressive, right? Or what? Which one? Yeah, the pulse? Like, the pulse. Uh, it says two burst. It's heavy burst. Heavy burst. That's not. So that's not like. Because you it's know what the, the way. Model? It's like the exotic yeah. fires. The two, two. Or graviton oh, lance, it's the like two. graviton. Oh, they yeah. making the gra- okay because they only got that in trials with this with the strand one. Yep. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Heavy burst graviton lance there. Okay. All right. All right. And then of course perfect paradox for Saint coming of back. Course. And then the artifact yeah. perks from Fallout's video, if you saw it, is just like his thumbnails. It's just all snipers. Solar s- solar fulmination, so your ignitions do increase damage. Solar mm-hmm. sniper rifle precision hits scorched targets. Sniper yeah. rifle hits grant stacking sniper rifle damage, stability and reload bonus. Heavy ammo sniper rifles count more. So Ooh. basically just pull out a solar sniper sniper rifle and go delete the witness is what it sounds Whisper. like. <laughs> Whisper, a season of the Whisper. Let's get it. Whisper's going to well, come Whisper's out. Whisper's over there like, eh, and then all the hunters are like, still hunt. <laughs> yep, still hunt. You already know. I'm actually curious, even though I know it's not solar, um, you'll give a little, little cloud strike. You know, a little love cloud strike here I know, and I mean, there. Just but the fact that like that they yeah. can proc over and over on itself with triple yeah, tap, yeah, yeah it's yeah, it's pretty effective. Crazy. Yeah, that's gonna be sick. I, I like I like with anti barrier sniper. It's rare. We don't get it a lot, but I like what they did yeah. put it up. So we get uh, so the first two battlegrounds, delve and conduit, will be available on the sixteenth. The third core will be available the following week on the twenty third. It's a little quicker delivery there, and I think Ooh. one of the bigger things from the stream, which we haven't mentioned, is the yes. fact that. Episode two, there was a little confusion, but they clarified episode two, which is going to be Revenant, which is all the vampire hunting and the scorn and all that stuff. That is going to have each act delivered fully at the start of the act. Whoa. So they are changing their delivery method. It's not like act one, two, and three. Not You're not going to get nine weeks of story at once, but you get three weeks at once, which is kind of what we were hoping for. Act one, here's all of act one. And they're going to take feedback and see how that goes. The, shout out to them. I uh, watched the, the stream with uh, with Andy, and uh, he's all he's excellent. We got to get him on. He's excellent. I love his hosting. Oh, I mean, Jimmy. Oh, no, uh, no um, yeah. And I think it's Andy Salisbury. Andy, Andy, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah no. he, he's amazing. Like I'm keeping a buck. He keep this up. He coming for Deej, man. Like he, he's he, putting he, it he's work. On, he's putting he's it work. on point. Yeah, he's on point. But um, now the thing that I liked about it is I was shocked at how quick the feedback was implemented. Because generally, the way they work, usually ahead of yeah, time, farther. you can't really edit it. You, this is how you're going to get it. So, oh, they took that feedback. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they took, And the fact that now it's almost, the way I look at it is almost like you you got the choice to binge, you know, like a, like a TV show. Or, hey, you do things at your own pace. You give people the option as opposed to, all right, was it, g- g- fail safe will contact you. <laughs> <laughs> Icora will contact you. Stick around for the next message, kind of hold up till next week. To, that's big, E. I mean, y- y'all was going in last week. I mean, that's a big, big response. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's doing professional podcasting. Yeah. yeah, people in the chat. Oh, uh, yeah, they said, "Do we know how episodes work to disappear?" Yeah, Twab's out. DJ the calls the future. Yes, the call is fine. Well, they disappear guys... at the next big expansion. So, right mm-hmm. now, we don't know what is next. To be fully and completely honest with you, mm-hmm. all we know is Codename Frontiers. That is all mm-hmm. we've got. Now, um, everyone assumes Codename Frontiers, space the final frontier, going out farther. Maybe we're departing from the Sol system. Maybe we're seeing other planets. Maybe it's a way for them to get us to a different gal. I don't know. Whole bunch of speculation. We don't know a damn thing. 
previously it's when the helm hits capacity has been at the end mm-hmm. of a year. You get your four seasons. The helm only has so many doors. So many doors. Yeah. Um, this time, failsafe's kind of taken up the middle, which yes. is typically where maybe the first season kind of up at the front would be generally. Um, but they're still using that like middle nook. So like the war table up front, you would still have the three doors. They could get creative, maybe mm-hmm. stretch the use of the helm or the rooms in the helm or the doors that they incorporate mm-hmm. if they want to, to keep things around a little bit longer. I think all of it matters what comes next. Mm. So do you. I'm trying to think like mm-hmm. post. Post witness stuff yes. shoots out into the world. You got your like right. three we things we're going to go investigate. Mm-hmm. Yep. We're going to go through Echoes, Revenant, and I always forget the last one. <laughs> yeah, I forgot the one. Um, That's the, uh, we're going to go through those three, and those are meant to be, like, if you come in later and you want to play Echoes, that's going to be a self-contained story about the Vex, mm-hmm. the Radio Laria, Saint Osiris, but mm-hmm. it doesn't sound like it's going to connect so much to the next one. They're going to be somewhat self-contained within, like, the Scorn world, the Hive world. Now, everybody speculates the hive and the dreadnought and us being pilots with the armor and all of those things have so many mm-hmm. weirdness to it. Um, it's it's hard to know what the helm is going to do with the seasons. Right. I yeah. would go into, in my opinion, I would go into it with the assumption that we, if these three episodes end and they do at some point announce some kind of expansion. Mm hmm then the episodes would probably maybe wrap up in a live way they have if the next expansion has episodes. If we go to a different destination completely with Codename, mm-hmm. then you might have the space to keep that stuff around. Right. But I you feel like if it, they need to mm-hmm. reuse the helm for a, a future year, yeah, that's when it would get wiped. So it all depends on how they use that stuff in the game. Right. So, I mean, the question in a post ep- act episode three world when we get whatever frontiers is right whatever that is is your question that because of the way the helm is uh structured now that they won't retain that content is that yeah i said it, it's 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 a tough it's, one i mean it's the it, way it's been going for years but i think these right. are different so it's really hard to know yeah it, um, it's, it's hard that yeah, i'll let you no it's just the fact that like they use the full helm for like the four seasons we get. And then it's just operation clean sweep. We start over. There's like, right. All right, everybody brush out the rooms, clean them out. We got new tenants <laughs> moving in. Yeah. So right, right now we got a lot of up. plants. We got a lot of flora right now. We got <laughs> yeah, a lot of flora. We, you know, we're getting the greenery established. So we got our ecosystem right, right. in there. Um, so that's really, I think the only thing we can see is how they use the helm in episode two actually may be a bit more telling than what we know right now. Cause right now everything's up in the air. If episode two, it's just behind another door where like Eris was last year, then that might be a thing. At some point, the doors are going to fill up unless they just keep making doors. But this is the weird transition where nobody really yeah. knows. So it's knows hard to tell. Doing. Yeah. We're in this weird pocket with them. So again, because the episode format technically is new, right? Yeah. You know, even though it does have some seasonal similarities, <laughs> but um, you know, yeah, I, I I think they've got to kind of clean slate it again. I mean, at least the helm, right? It feels it you know. feels like yeah. It's like if the self-contained stories have anything that has future implications, at some point you're not going to want to retell that story again. Like at some mm-hmm. point you would close that book and then open right. whatever the effects of echoes are, if mm-hmm. that affects something in the future. I just don't know what it's going to be like to get there. It's so like we're this is that's what everybody is so annoyed with Same. Destiny right now is. Final Shape is so good. We get to Echoes. Kind of felt a little seasonal. Mm -hmm. Especially in Act 1. I know we talked about that last week. We don't have to Mm -hmm. beat that dead horse. But, you know, it has the seasonal feel. Not entirely sure. There is zero big bad out there right now. Like, Zivu Mm Arath isn't even a mortal at this point. She is a mortal hive god to some extent. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, what is a big threat that's out in the world right now? So, these are all... Oh, there is. Oh, there's a widower. I know. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. listen to good old Mylan Games there. I know. Mylan Games. And and just shout out to the homie But they haven't established that besides a tease of dialogue in the raid that a lot of people haven't touched. Touched, right. But to remember, like, in fairness, right now, the vibe that I'm getting from them is power vacuum, right? The witness is defeated. 
They kind of allude at the end of the campaign when Crow is talking to Savala, because I finally got a chance to watch that damn cinema that crashed on me <laughs> that I didn't get a chance to watch. Yeah. But now that I watched it, yeah, the, the, volume, the, the vibe I'm getting... Remember, remember when we killed Oryx and it was like, they're taking war, rages on, or whatever, yeah. whatever, right? And then, but this I'm getting is these echoes, whatever the light and the traveler and the darkness, and it, 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 it kind of spewed out to these locations, in my opinion, are going to create this power vacuum between the remaining take and the score, and they're leaderless, right? Then you've got each faction going through their own thing, right? Vex now looks like, yo, we're going to be which I've always wanted, conducted by someone. <laughs> there, will be, right? there will be some face of the Vex, correct. It, which is ultimately, I would, so they now have a sub-faction. And remember, they're fighting amongst each other also because there's still Vex that's down with the collective and then there's the new Vex that got the little colors on it, little oh, prismatic yeah. looking Vex. We've had <laughs> like, Vex from different times. There's been a lot of varieties of Vex yeah. over like the years. Mm-hmm. So now we got the single entity falling. We're going to see what's going on with the vampire stuff. We know we still got Zivu to deal with. Zivu's I think there's- still- yeah, they'll establish that. I think they'll slowly, if I had to predict, slow. they're s- slowly going to build Wil- Winner. We're going to have, a, in my opinion, in the meantime, we're going to have a bunch of little sub-bosses. Yeah. Yeah. They don't, feel like they, have a, like, they don't feel like they're going to tie to the Winner, though. So that's where this is the point where, like, Codename Frontiers going out and something grander is what the Winner gets involved. Is it going to another system, another galaxy, opening a wormhole? How does the dreadnought travel? Is that how they establish, like, hey, do you want to have a different director screen and they can actually shift us over? Is that how they get out of having a Destiny 3, but then does the game become 200 gig or something? I mean, that's right. That's the question where everybody wonders, is it D2? Is it D3? Do you keep this going? How many episodes does it take to get to whatever the next moment is? So right. much is up in the air right now, and I don't know if they're going to tell us for a little while because... yeah. They're cooking up a lot. It feels like that moment where, you know, they're they're doing it's like a sports team with the building seasons, but they're mm. doing all the building seasons where the public's in the dark. And yes. we don't get to know yeah, we <laughs> until to like, know. all right, team's ready. Here we go. Now this is our team. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what have you been doing for four years? All of this <laughs> kind of thing. All of this. Like yeah. as opposed to watching it happen in front of us, there that's that's where it's the big question mark for everybody, I think, of right course. now. Of course, of course. Uh, but just the fact they took the feedback, as you said, for episode two, act Whoa. one, here's act one, blah, I have it. never seen that from them. That's quick. That Yeah, that is super quick. Cause I, I saw them Bife videos. When you, when Bife was upset, I was like, oh man, this is bad. But I, <laughs> He's, I yeah. was like, you, you enjoyed the seasonal idea more. And it's like the activity itself versus the way the story was delivered. It just mm-hmm. didn't feel like a lot happened. And I know there's like three acts to a story. But again, I there was something I feel like when we ended last week's episode, I kid you not, I think it was last mm-hmm. week's episode it ended, and they teased something on Twitter, and I sent it to you guys. I was like, was this in-game? Yeah. And I was like, this wasn't in-game. I'm like, why not? <laughs> why not? Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. what, it was just like the reaching hand or something was like shown in kind of mm-hmm. a graphic and a little bit with the Vex, and I'm like, that that's what I needed to see. That's your little cliffhanger to go to Act 2, mm-hmm. but it wasn't in, that was the piece I was missing. Mm-hmm. To kind of make Act One have so if you went through like here's this Saints having issues then you're gonna go rescue Saint and then oh here's your little cinematic teaser of the hand kind mm-hmm. of you know puppet mastering some Vex then mm-hmm. it cuts I'm like that's how you do an Act One you were just a little short last time so that was yeah. just my opinion on it no I agree I agree I, um look they've got a lot to tell here um I'm very curious shout out to Ethan. Schmidt, yeah, no, he's right. He said the winner isn't a big bad; it's one half of the same coin. You can't kill the light, just like yeah, you it's can't like the forces the of good and evil. The they partner, are, yeah, they're the perpetual. forces. They're, yeah. Correct, but but it definitely the force was very happy with us killing and pillaging and doing. They they like that part for the the way I look at it is as a as a balance of the universe kind of thing, right? You know, what I'm saying both are necessary. You have the traveler, which is you know theoretically, I guess the gardener or whatever, and then the winner is you know doing this. So you can't. There's, there's basically the vibe I'm getting from them is there is penalty for too much growth, right? Like with travelers just going from civilization to civilization and blow, blowing up whatever. I mean, but you get into the Thanos argument of things. <laughs> right. It's the balance of the universe type energy. Absolutely. That, that's how I look at it. But it is interesting that the force of the winner is communicating with us. I find that interesting in a way. The f- well, so far the witnesses talk to us as a yeah. vessel of the winner, but it's still yeah. the 
the witness kind of explained that they are one knife in the hand of the Winor. So it was yes, still the, the first witness knife. doing the communication to the Guardians. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the Winor per se has directly communicated with us yet. He he, from my understanding, communicated with Oryx. That, the Winor, that was, or the Winor did? Yeah, because they, at that time, people thought the big. This is deep lore community, so I've been watching these videos. <laughs> so the, the time is back to those books, book story stuff. Is that they? Everyone thought Oryx was communicating with the witness, but the way the verbiage was, and now it's the same verbiage that we're seeing now. It was the winner, so is what they confirmed. So, oh, what they said. Rest in peace, still. Huh? What's going well, on? What's happening? Is I thought it was getting buffed with all the solar mods coming in next next artifact. Mm-hmm. Peace. Yeah, they're doing a reserve swap. I know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like someday. I will just be able to start an activity and my reserves and the ammo drops that happen in the world will just function as intended. Yes. Small piece at a time, I guess. Yes, please. Oh, please. it's getting nerfed with Nighthawk. Really? Oh, and Hunters. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they enjoyed yeah. nuking the witness and stuff. Whoever I think mm. just soloed, um, somebody soloed the witness, by the way. So shout what? Out. Yeah. That's wild. That's shout wild. out to the crazy... Um, mm-hmm. where is it? Destiny Help that dropped it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see it. Is it yeah, in the twa- it. or it might be just in the twid and it just hadn't scrolled down far enough? Uh, we got new and returning mm-hmm. weapons, balance, 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 weapons. weapons. Uh, reducing mm-hmm. fin- flinch for snipers. Oh no, there it is. It's in the paragraph. Yeah, it's the paragraph underneath we- weapons. Oh. Yeah, in addition to the, yeah, updates, one new update we wanted to mention was a change we're planning for Steel Hunt. We'll be reducing Steel, Steel Hunt's golden gun shot damage when paired with Celestial Nighthawk by 25%. Since launch, we've been monitoring the potency of this exotic and felt it needed a slight adjustment. While hunters have the op- opportunity for some thematic tie-ins between Celestial Nighthawk, Golden Gun and Still Hunt, this should help to reduce a bit of damage disparity between each clan. Yeah, Warlocks, we, we can't do that. And, and Titans. And between what should be a vi- viable weapon alternatives. Whisper of the Worm has a bit more opportunity to outshine this special exotic with upcoming artifact perks after these changes. We'll be looking out for whatever fun boss melting clips you come up. Yeah, Go you look at your whispers. I have a guide. Or two or three. Exactly. <laughs> or two or three. Yeah, they like, go have fun go while you melt, and then we're going to look to see how fast you melt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> don't oh, they, melt they, too they fast, let y'all. You, they, let, they let you enjoy the god combo. Now you got to come back down to planet Earth a little bit. Yeah. Now, I'm going to admit, though, like, I was one of the guys, I, I think, I'm, this affects because I, like, I'm not a hunter. And I'm like, damn. To me, it's like, it don't make no sense for me to use it. Because yeah, I'm like, I never got around to the raid, so I never did that whole crazy combo anyway. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not doing that. Because hunters is, with Celestial is the way to play. So I'm going to go with, with something else. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but reducing flinch for sniper rifles by 50% in PvE is actually huge. Yeah. Every so often you're running around and it's just like, blah, 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 it's like bouncing around. I'm like, what am I trying to? This is ridiculous. The tech scout rifles in PvE by 30%. I never use those things because they don't feel great. I mean, scout rifles in general, but I'm always like, should I be like ADSing this thing? And I typically probably would for PVE, but if they hit 30% harder, I Mm. might try it because typically I I do not like, because they take forever to reload. Like, I don't love them. Do not love those. Ariana's getting 67% damage damage, uh, versus barrier shields. And Mm -hmm. I think it's just getting a buff. And then you got the armor reserves costing less, fixing that one, the percent up, all that Mm -hmm. stuff. So... Yeah, removing the stat penalties from adept mods. But yeah, I want to double down on this tech. I, I'll be wanting to use the tech scout rifles and because I feel they should hit harder. Remember, there's that trials one that's a stasis. I think it's prophecy or something. I forgot what it's called, but I want to give that a shot. But that new solar one, that looks nice. Now, I like I like that new solar one. So yeah, I'll, I'll give them a shot because they thematically, they feel they, they should hit hard, you know? So. I mean, yeah, it seems like it, but mm-hmm. it's also one that, like, hip firing a scout rifle seems so counterintuitive. Seems, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. Can't. Yeah, I agree. Solstice mm-hmm. armor. Mm-hmm. I, you, you don't sound thrilled. I mean, Hunter look okay. I'm looking at Hunter. It, they're going for this boots on the ground, explorer kind of feel. You know what I'm saying? I, I get it. I mean, it's, it's just, like an, uh, it's like a glowing Indiana Jones because you got like the leather jacket for all of them kind of thing going on. Yeah, yeah. Little yeah, variation yeah. of that. The hunter's probably the most. Le- well, the hunter's got the cut off leather jacket. 
<laughs> then you got the leather trench coat, and then I'm somewhere there with like the leather suit. I kind of like the Titan vibe though. Titan's not for, bad, especially for the front. From the front, then I will say this: I, I'm I'm digging the helmets and the little, you know, whatever this this these this UI interface on top of the helmets. Like you got a tar- like you got some type of targeting system. I like that. I like the boots. The Titans look look tough. My thing is, it's something about the jacket ain't hitting for me. Per se for the warlock, but and that's uh, yeah, what you like signed up for. You are yeah. going to have the trench coats or the dresses or the robes or the longer knee level coat. That's just what that's your, your warlock. You've yeah, decided it, this. this. You know what it is? It looked like <laughs> it's too like you know how like something is all oh, very iron stiff. <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's just a stiff too much starch in the coat there yeah it's too much starch <laughs> in the joint man like let that honestly i think when that bit. one gets in game it might look all right because these are more concept so True. none of these are going to hit like this like the glows mm-hmm. i don't know how they're going to do and the concepts always they do pretty good but there's sometimes i see the concepts and then i get them in game and i was like thought about buying that armor but not so much so mm-hmm. i'll be kind of curious how the real in-game item actually looks i love the helmet of the titan i think that's another thing. i don't like the helmet it's just this whole hood thing on the wall yeah but we've had like this is not a new shape true it's like we've had that before i'm not saying the warlock one is either but it's just mm. glass front on the little you know yeah. spoiler dome we'll, we'll see it in game but for now yeah. so bungee and rec room oh wow for y'all baby yep so mm-hmm. that's going to be a big game. That's a big game of VR. Okay. The well, there engage, you go. Engage, you, yeah, you hit that one because, yep, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I worked on that game. Um, Work with the teams on that game, excuse me. But, um, yeah, with that, that the huge engagement, you kind of create your own rooms. You could get yeah, all these cool activities. I, that's a big collaboration for them to go into VR in that space. Mm-hmm. There we go. Oh, just saw another tweet come out just making sure it wasn't anything else I yeah. missed. Yeah, it's going to be doing live professional podcasting. Um, speaking of professional podcasting, what have you been playing this week, sir? <laughs> <laughs> have you yes. been playing? De- I haven't touched Destiny in a hot minute. <laughs> I didn't touch yet. I was supposed to shout out to DJ. Um, I was supposed to get Ray with the team. Got caught up. I had to help mom out. But um, I've actually been playing a lot of um, Kunitsugami, the uh, Path of the Goddess I demo. I have that demo. I need to try it. Oh, I heard you talk about I, it. Yeah, it sounds I, like, I like the way it. you described like the the... The live, but like kind of XCOM setup kind of sounds like it speaks to you. Yeah, yeah. This is this is all me, and then yeah. it's just it's just a, it's a vibe, and it's very cultural. It's very it's something mystical about it. You know what I'm saying? But if you like a little bit of Japanese horror, a little bit of mysticism, but a little bit of real time action, some yokai in bit, there. Yeah, a little yokai. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it's it's a thing. And then um, what's the second one? I mean, I, no, I actually played Desi, but I was what I was grinding for. Oh man, I gotta point my demo. I was, I was actually, you know, I still didn't get Kavostov. That's what it was. I was like, I gotta get because of Kavostov. Though I didn't, I never that did it. You need to get, yeah. That's a pain quest. Oh, my Bro, video is not short, dude. <laughs> Bro, that my video quest... breaks it down, but I swear it's an hour. Hold on, I gotta look how long that video is. I forget because I did one that was like somebody's like an hour. I think that was the prismatic mm-hmm. guy, but maybe it's the other one. It's, it's meaty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. It is a meaty one to run through, yes, and then a, yeah. It's, now I'm up to the part where I got to get all the. Oh no, that's a thirty, tra- but it's a thirty minute guide. Yeah, prismatic was an hour. That's the one that was an hour. Prismatic was long, but yeah, get the. I got to get the uh, travelers pause balls. <laughs> I got to get all the get those, and then I'm finished because I I was missing one overthrow boss, and now I got that. But yeah, I got to get that. I, I want to see how it is in a because it got nerfed, right? So I want to see how yeah. it is in a you know, post nerf world. So I'm just doing that. Um we did excision finally last week. Um on uh we did the Grandmaster one. We got we knocked that out. I did my trials. I did my trials um also before it we came out. I'm gonna be real true. Banner came. I just got to the part where I locked multi Mac and then I kind of stopped and I was just like, all right, I got criminals dag, I got multi black. I'm not doing this no more. <laughs> I got everything and I got the the pulse, whatever it is. I, I didn't have a good role for the pulse. Because I know everybody wants the um, what is it, repulsor brace and uh, what you call oh, it, destabilizing but, or whatever, if you can. Yeah, but for me, it's no priority because I was able to get that with uh, Elsie's. I got yeah, an Elsie's. I'm over on all the void weapons that do that. I'm over on all of those things. And now, so dude, good. grinding. Um, what was it over? What was the end of the light horde mode? What was that oh, called? Onslaught. Onslaught. 
Yeah, yeah. grinding that now is awful. Really? It's just you Drop have no bad. direction to your grind. Oh, that's right. They took There's away no the... There's no focusing or anything. There's no attunement? No. Oh, damn. It's just the activity and roll the dice. Roll the dice. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm glad I get all my homework. Oh, I'm good. Wow. I mean, granted, I've been playing something that's just grindy as anything. I've been playing First mm-hmm. Descendant. I got. Yes, I, need, I need your opinion. I'm. I am hearing things. I was, spoke to Maddie, and we saw. I saw Travis. What did review. Maddie have to say? Or is he not Maddie public? I have the good. He didn't. I have the no. nice thing. I mean, Travis started, gave it a five. I saw. Yeah. So look, you you the looter shooter. Like, what's what's the vibe? What's your vibe? It is free to play. Mm-hmm. It is a. Is this the Nexon one? Yeah, it's a Nexon game. Mm-hmm. There are things about it that kind of work. Like when okay. you fire a scout rifle and you hit a headshot. It has like the satisfying sound and impact to the gun, co- and it's third person. It actually, okay. the gun combat is pretty good. Oh, and, and this, I mean, again, it's free. There are two different free games I'm playing, and they're different experiences. This one is free, but you will hit a point where you can pay to skip grinding for all the things, but technically, there are paths to get all the things. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the story is it's like Destiny 1's unclear story. Gotcha. But with less excellent voice acting, like, I mean, mm. so it, I mean, I see a five and it's like, but if it's a type of thing where you're willing to put in the grind, you like shooting guns, you like seeing numbers go up and those kind of things, some mm. people are going to enjoy it. So it's like the five being a mediocre looter shooter is probably fair. Story is not, not exactly like riveting. Um, you go mm. and you talk to like an NPC and then you go do stuff in a the world. There's not like. And mostly it's just you're talking to an NPC, so you have seen the person's name who is a descendant that you can unlock later. And mm-hmm. that's the main thing of going around the areas. The mission design is kind of repetitive. The grinds get even more repetitive. It is, I'm not going to give it high praise. A lot of people are playing it, though. So for yeah, coverage, it's something I'm playing. It. Yep. I'm looking at Xbox both playing, and it's up there. Oh, so nice. it's the fact that if you, it's a looter shooter and it is totally free and it is on console. That is mm-hmm. probably the trifecta that is allowing it to have the legs that it is. Because mm-hmm. if you didn't play Destiny and Division hadn't done anything in a while, like maybe Div- Div- Division 3 exists, who knows? But right now, if you want a looter shooter, it's not really a fresh one to scratch that itch. And if Destiny's not your thing or you're like, 10 years is too much for me to dive through, mm-hmm. this is a fresh one and it is doesn't cost you an ounce of anything to try it. It is free. Mm-hmm. No, fair enough. I mean, as, look, but you know, but, but like as for how it feels, I would probably give it like a six, like an okay, just because there are things. I mean, Paul Tassi was like first day was like, I'm not loving this one. And then his recent video was I did a 180 on it. So it's kind of one of those where I know I know some people that are like, hey, if you give me something to grind for, like you could this is the thing where you could grind for what you're going for mm-hmm. and then put on a Netflix show. You could have a pretty right. good time. Yeah. Like, um, running around and doing the missions. I mean, if you guys in Destiny think we have, like, some boring mission design, you got nothing. Nothing when it comes to, like, the repetitive stand-in circle. Go over here and stand in circle. When you're done standing in circle, pick up thing, put in here, stand in circle, pick up thing, put in here, stand in (laughs) circle and defend this until bar is done Mm -hmm. and kill things. Uh, And then they have, like, an escort, which is probably the most annoying of all of them. Yeah, but you have to you this. have to escort a robot, but it needs your shield to move. So okay. it slowly, like really slowly zaps your shield. But if you take damage when enemies you're fighting, then all of a mm-hmm. sudden you have no shield to help this guy move. So then you have to stand out, get hey. some shield back, then go get back in the circle. Do a little one of these. What movie is that from? I'm trying to remember what movie is that, that from. Was that all? Um, was that the the, the joint with uh? With, Not with like Jackie Rush Hour, is it? Is it Rush, Rush Hour? Hour? I feel oh, that's yeah, Rush Chris Hour. Tucker, Jackie Chan, Chan Chris yeah. Tucker. Yep. Yeah. Um, but that's what it feels Classic. like oh i'm out of shield hold on i gotta duck outside the circle let me get, build my shield back up. okay i'm good let's move again <laughs> oh i took damage hold on because the first time i did one of those i wasn't realizing what it was doing i thought i just had to stay in the circle and right. then i got to a point where i was just standing in the circle but we weren't moving i was like why aren't you moving and mm. then i finally got out and it says i needed shield so it's um mm. it's kind of mm. one of the there are It is sometimes nice, like I will say the, they call them dungeons. They're kind of like a strike per zone. And they're like, there's quite a few of them. Mm. The bosses in in and of themselves, not really that crazy. But Mm. once you get a little bit later, 
There's some cool cinematic moments, a couple okay. bosses that'll give you a challenge. I did a decent amount of it solo. Mm -hmm. uh, the big Colossus fights are unique. They're bigger okay. than like anything we fight in Destiny typically. Oh, wow. Like not, not like raid size scale, but your strike bosses. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're bigger than those on a little bit, a little bit bigger than those on a scale, but they all have mm -hmm. different damage types. You'll kind of shoot off parts of their armor and kind of weaken them. And then you can like grapple hook up to like the grapple hook actually feels pretty good to use like movement mm -hmm. and mobility and the way the classes feel the class skills feel a little on the weak side they feel mm. like they could all probably get buffed a bit a little buff so um, look unplayed and ability yeah kind of and i mean i was mm -hmm. playing ajax and he's just a titan barricade titan bubble and then i've got but the thing about him is if i'm gonna go do any damaging type of skills yeah. i have like a jump where i land and do like a pulse but I have mm -hmm. to be in the middle of the enemies or I have to be the in, in the middle of the enemies and do like a shockwave from my center. So either gotcha. way, I've got to be next to him to yeah, do any damage so or, do I'm, it. or I'm using guns a lot. So I'm using guns most of the time. Some mm. people and there, there are interesting ones where like Bunny runs around really fast, kind of builds up the skill energy, has this like zapping pulse that just like hurts everything around. Really good at clearing ads like mm -hmm. the there is some decent stuff in here. But it's like if you're looking for like an epic story campaign and, you know, really yeah, interesting, it mission, it's not there. Yeah, it's not there. And so okay. it's like the five yeah. to six. I get it. Yeah. But if you're looking for something to scratch the looter itch, it's free and you can just play it on your console and kind of just have a good time. Yeah. Unplug your brain for a bit. It's one of those. Mm -hmm. The other one I was I started mm -hmm. a bit and I've played some of the betas once human. It's actually now public. Mm. So that one also free again. And this one, and the thing about First Descendant, you can see the monetization pretty apparent. Yeah. Outs, outside of the fact that you can spend $100 for the Ultimate Bunny skin, and I'm sure you've seen that running around on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that. yeah, they go crazy on Twitter. So once that. human is way less like, like in your face buy stuff, there's not a lot of it that I see. It is a survival crafting. So go around like, you know, you're chopping trees, but it does little things like if you chop a tree, you don't get like one wood. Every time you hit the tree, it's like 13, 14, 13, 14. So if you chop down like one tree, you have like 150 wood to go construct stuff at your base. So it's like, it doesn't feel as grindy on that stuff. But then when you get to, you're like, okay, I've got a crossbow. Well, let me shoot it at this weird zombie. Okay, that's not a zombie. That's a guy standing there with a spotlight for a head. So it's this weird <laughs> kind of horror amalgamation, but paired with like technology. Because like one of the mm. first things you fight is like a radio tower that stands up out of the ground. And then you shoot the radio tower like dishes as crit spots. Mm -hmm. So it's got this, there's one point where you can, there's a bus that has six legs, like a bug, but it is a full size bus. So the legs are even bigger. Yeah. Every so often the bus will stop, kind of get down. You can walk mm. on the bus and it will go like doom, doom. And you're just going along on the weirdest bus ride you've ever seen. And it's going down <laughs> the street. And then it's like stopping here and then you can get off. I'm like, that's so weird. I'm seeing a house with that right now. That is yeah. crazy. So then, but yep. I mean, yeah, you can build a multi-story house. Like very early on, you get a motorcycle. So traversal is actually pretty fast. Yep. Start moving around the world. And it's a big world with like, I mean, you look at the skill trees of things that you unlocked and things that you can build and the different types of mm. ammo and weapons and upgrades. The game is insanely deep, like mm. really, really deep for tiers of weapons that you'll get. And then you've got armor and crafting and there is so much. I mean, they had multiple closed beta tests, but I mean, I've messed around up to like level eight or nine. There's people like well, 50, 55. The world is massive. Laser. It is mm -hmm. a like if you're looking for a survival crafting open world can MMO thing. It doesn't cost you a penny and you can actually go do so much like now. Granted, I don't have a voice when I'm talking, so it's a little unpolished. Um, <laughs> so it's so it's like both of these games are free. But they are unpolished. They are not right. refined. Like They're not refined yet. For refined box products that you should be paying for. But on right. the other side of things, the systems that are there, the combat in First Ascendant, the boss fights in First Ascendant, the depth, the crafting, and then even just like I shoot a crossbow in an enemy. I walk over and loot the body and I get my arrow back in mm. once human. Um, it's the minigun that a boss is holding. At one point, you can hit him enough and stagger him. He drops the minigun. I pick it up. Sounds like a freaking minigun. So it's like mm. these games don't cost you anything, but also they are reasonably unpolished. So it's like you see a yeah. five or a six out of them. I'm like, I totally get that. But if somebody yeah, wants yeah. to play some of these things for free, once human, I think is PC only. That's yeah. probably why they are doing what they're doing. I think. Yeah. Barrier of entry lower, but at the same time, in fairness to both games, these are 
foundationally, you know, in the beginning, you know, generally looter looters and these type of games take a while to build. Let's be honest. Even yeah. Destiny at its base level. Oh, yeah. You know, even though it was more polished than these two, but you know, it wasn't what it became, what we know it become. So, yeah, in fairness to it, we'll see. And it's it seen everyone's going to the free-to-play model. You know, the only thing yeah. is... It, I, I wonder on with, how sometimes they make the money. Now, granted, I know when you buy a $100 bunny skin, that's how they're making the money. Once human, mm -hmm. it's less clear how they're making money. So, I don't know if they just... Yeah. I don't know on that one. Um, but it's, yeah, it's this weird thing where you go... We get there done talking about Final Shape and the beautiful cinematic nature and this, like, curated experience that you get. And it's so good. And these emotional moments... Sometimes people just want to like chop down trees and build a base and shoot some guys yep. and turn their brain off. And if the comp and that's the thing, it's like the combat in both is where a pretty good amount of the focus is. Cause if the combat mm -hmm. sucks, you're not going to want to do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if the combat is decent in both of these, whether the mission structure is boring, mm -hmm. but then you kind of go through and do like, there's a foundational level that doesn't suck. Whether mm -hmm. the, you know, glitz and glamor of the story or, the voices that don't quite mesh with the faces, all of that stuff. Like, I mean, it's all, everything you can think of. It's all there. Cause you're laughing. But yeah. if like, if that is stuff they work on polishing for however long to come. And then eventually you get to a point where, Hey, somebody jumps in and you're like, Hey, do you want to jump into my server? You go through the entertaining store, like the early story tutorial thing. And then things start to work and that stuff they get to later. But like building your base, shooting the guns, crafting, if those systems function from the go, there's something there. And it's like, it's weird yeah. that both of these right now are free, unpolished, but kind of getting an audience. Because both mm -hmm. on Steam were over 100K. Yeah, the engagement. Which goes to show that there is some, you know, compellingness with the free to play model. You know, no barrier entry, but then <laughs> they're right they next to each other. Right. Yeah. Once human just hit its oh, peak, wow. 147,000. That's, that's the highest it's been. And it's been climbing for the last few days. That's and huge. then first descendants at 164. Now, first that's descendant, huge. I wonder. When you beat the campaign and then you get to like hard difficulty, every piece mm -hmm. of gear starts dropping at 100. That's if people get to that point and then they're like, oh, I want to open a first ascendant. I'm working on and I'm trying to put this guide into words that make sense. But if I take hold on, I want to show you. I want to see if I can. Hold on, I'm going to send this to you just so I can get your reaction. Mm -hmm. so this is like how to unlock any descendant. But this is. All right, let's see. <laughs> the man got the thesis <laughs> but this is literally like so if you're yeah. going to open a descendant they have four different parts and outside of the first couple then you got to go get all the pieces to research a part and then when you have all four parts then you can research the descendant but you mm. want to know an annoying thing that I found early on the what? number of descendants you can have is limited unless you want to buy more capacity so even if you go through and research and free to play all of them you'll at some mm. point hit a cap where you can't even unlock all of the descendants for free. Now, yeah, granted, if you unlock all of them at that point, yeah, you probably owe them like 10 bucks because you've been playing that game for like 2,000 hours mm -hmm. or something. But And I think that's one of the things in Travis' review he he talked about. He tested the grind with not trying to spend money. That's what and I'm he doing. he was like, yeah. yeah, bruh. He's like, this is wild. Now, they like, just buffed like one of the resources where you have to go to these vaults where you do a little yeah. like clicking minigame and timing thing. They, mm -hmm. they buffed that by like 300% of what those dropped. Okay. And that was like one of the pain points of like, because you have to find like random keys just by killing stuff. And yeah. then you open the vault. Now there's one specific descendant, which you need to unlock pretty like as a priority, because when they interact with these vaults, which all of them probably need a little bit from, mm -hmm. he makes the vaults easier and gets more mm -hmm. from them. So it's like, mm -hmm. he needs to be a priority, but it's like weird that that's his like side piece bonus or whatever. It's <laughs> like there are, there's, there's a lot to these and it's so weird, but they both right now sit at 150,000 carats on steam. It's like, that's nothing to sneeze at. It's so, no, that's huge. That that's a big deal. So, the key is going to be, yeah, like, especially with both of these, these games is also, you know, it reminds me also, which what I love Remember outriders, right? We like, yo, dude, I mean that game, now that game, I would put polish above both of these. Yes. Cause I it would really say was so. like, I mean, I the systems so. worked. I mean, the mod system in that game the was still one of the best the mod best. systems. No question. Period. And that's the thing about First Ascendant, though. The builds that you can make, because you get a mod, and you're like, hey, it increases attack power, but you can increase the, v like, performance of that mod at tiers, and mm. they start going somewhere, like, exponential, which get to be, like, right. your shield. Like, oh, raise your HP by, like, 12%, 20%, 35%, 50%, 70 100% shield. Like, you mm. start doubling, and when you're at, like, level 100 for your guy, all of a sudden, when you double this, you're like, I am really powerful. So it's mm. like, and if you lean into mods and kind of understand the modding system of 
not just, hey, go try and pick a few mods because you have like a mod capacity with everything that has a cost. Right. It's kind of like our armor slots. Same thing. But instead of, so if you took, say, it'd be like in Destiny, if you took a surge mod and normally, mm -hmm. you know, say, say it, I mean, these are the wrong numbers, but say it was like 5, 10, 15%. Right. But the surge mod maybe costs like one energy. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe if you level that thing up, now it costs it, three itself. energy, but now it's like 15, 30, 45% right. damage. So if you Figure. invest in even just the mod, then mm -hmm. the mods have more value. Gotcha. And then there the weapons, the perks, you can reroll the perks on the weapons for a currency, but then you got to research that. So there's like, so your ability to min max is going to get down to the tiniest little minutia. And there is a point where many people are going to find stages where they tap out. I think yeah. once human being is just such a big open crafting kind of MMO survival crafting thing. I think that survival crafting thing will have longer legs. First Ascendant, I think is going to have people hit walls when they finish mm. the campaign, but it's still like a, I don't know how long the campaign was 30 hours. If you play mm -hmm. it solo, something like that for nothing. Yeah. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. Dope, 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 dope. I'm with it. Sounds oh. good. A lot, of, a lot of promise. And look, they got the engagement right now. That's what the key for them is to keep it. And like I said, we'll see how they do in this uh, free to play grind world. And the, man, <laughs> what? There are too many games. There's too many games, bro. Dude, this I don't. <laughs> not enough time for that. These two are not small that I'm talking about, by the way, in case you guys mm -hmm. aren't clear on that one. These are not small games. So you got Once mm -hmm. Human this week. Last week we had First Ascendant, both free, pretty sizable. Angerfoot comes out today. Not touching that one, but it looks kind of goofy fun. Next week, we have four games coming out on the same day. Is that freaking right? What we got? Uh, Flintlock and Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess, both on the 18th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Nobody Wants to Die on the 17th. College mm -hmm. Football on the 19th. Oh, that's a huge one. People are going crazy for that. Mm -hmm. and that's like all in one week and it was like yeah and the next month black myth wukong oh wow it's that quick black Damn. myth is next month end of the month i realize that and wow. it is the day before star wars outlaws oh wow and then also on Somebody the 29th visions of mana wow and then the that's world of crazy. warcraft expansion is on the 26th mm-hmm Oh, sorry. Black Myth is on the 20th. You do have a break, but I'm looking at go. Visions of Mana and Star Wars Outlaws. I wanted to play both of those in their day apart. Yeah. Madden is on the 16th next month. Good old man. Uh, what is, I feel, Creatures of Ava. That's a little one. Cat, mm -hmm. Cat Quest, Steam World Heist. There's just like, for just a game. year Everyone that I was knows. like, oh, last year everybody was like, oh, 2023 is so packed to games. I'm like, are you sure? 2023 had some really good ones, but I would say 2024, if you can't find something to play once human, mm -hmm. uh, you can do the whole thing single player. I've done everything I've done single player so far. You are going to be on a server with other people, but it is a PVE server. So you do not have to fight anyone if you don't want to just FYI. Right. Uh, if you do PVP server, that's your choice and have fun. Cause I feel like my base would just get destroyed in three seconds. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah. And then guess what? So next week, we oh, have, next week. no, next week is Flintlock and Kanitsugami, both coming out on the 18th. On 18th. I have an embargo around there. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say when, you'll just know it's Can't soon. say when, we'll just know. What's on the 16th? The new episode of Destiny 2. Yeah. <laughs> <And two. laughs> but, but we can binge. <laughs> no, we if can't. we choose. Not we can't this, binge. No, not in, not oh, in this. Till? It's not till episode two. Not act two ah, and three. Episode two. Act. Nope. See, that was the confusion got they clarified. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Still going to be weekly it. delivery with this one. Ah. So, we okay. Get. So, it's still quick, but not quick on this particular. Okay. That makes sense. Because I was like, yo, how was they able to pull this off? Yeah. Okay. Oh, then enough, you want to know when Act Episode Three or Act Three of Episode One drops? When the twenty seventh of August, right before, like two days before Outlaws and Visions oh, of yeah, Mana, yeah. and a week after Black Myth Wukong. I'm like, can you guys That's time crazy. this stuff worse? <laughs> Please time it worse. I don't know how and you what's could. What's funny is they think you know in their mind like, oh, there's no big games gonna be coming out. Like it's so many games, bro. It is crazy. Yeah, I saw Crazy. On, yeah, um, somebody in chat, Tales of Concerns, I had to do a little bit of layoffs. Oh, yeah, I saw yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, and it's, I did see that. I did see that. 
I mean, Ooh, I just shut up. don't know what sales were like on that one. It's like, it was a good game. I enjoyed it, but it was, yeah. I just don't know if there's too much going on. And I think yeah. right now that's the hard, the if industry. you don't get, if you don't get a breakout hit right now, mm-hmm. I mean, do you see stuff on Twitter? It's like, yeah, this, uh, what was the, it was one I think I even got a code for too. Um, Cause it had David Harbour, Jodie Comer, Alone in the Dark, that studio. Oh yeah. I was shocked by that. Cause I, yeah. I saw a preview. I was like, yeah, it looked like it had And then potential. something else. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Any thoughts on the Game Pass price increase? Oh yeah, Talk that's. About that I'm sure that's on Duke. I'm gonna. <laughs> oh, he boy. doesn't need to rehash that one. All I can say is now the whole world of gaming subscriptions is just a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> it's flat now. That's what it is. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Now it's it's extract from the users that you have. And that's the problem with all. That's it's, every subscription right now, and that's the problem. Yeah. Like Netflix yeah. being twenty three dollars. Game Pass Ultimate's going to be twenty. You got PlayStation Premium that's probably in the same boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all I mean, nobody has this much time and money to do all of them. Right. So at some point, number can't always go up, and they're right. finally realizing number is going to go down at some point, and it's the mm-hmm. value you put it. And it's like, is this a sustainable model? Right. Seems questionable on some fronts. Yeah, I think I think for them, the edits they're doing is for them to make it sustainable for them, and thus what they're showing me is. Oh, you're gonna get this. If you want day one, you're gonna pay this $20. Oh, that's and the guys yeah. dipping in for the one month that was trying to get at the lowest tier. When you dip in in order to get a call of duty, all this is pre-call of duty. Oh, I know stuff it is, yeah. To extract the most out of it. And yes, they I do feel they have uh they have flattened out, and this is their their workaround to to be sustainable, kind of thing. But yeah, it, it's it's an interesting talk. It, you gotta look at it like this: like, does it provide you value? If you're a person that may Look like, yeah, look I mean, like one or two like, games, it ain't gonna make sense for you, right? Well, that's kind of thing. It's it, like, does Xbox have the vault of games that you want to play at the base level, or do you see the prospect of everything they just showed in there? Right, at the like showcase. everything. Yeah, the showcase is that exciting to you? Yeah, cool. Does PlayStation have a lot of stuff in there, like premium that you want to play some old mm-hmm. nostalgia games? Because I don't think I can hear Maddie talk mm-hmm. about things when talking about classic games that he loves to play. Is that mm-hmm. what you love playing? That may be your right. jam. Maybe you like both, and maybe you just don't watch TV because you just play games all the time. That, that This is where people it's just a, have to start making those decisions of like decisions. time and money and how much do time you have of money. either. Yeah. For me, it's like I'm day one Game Pass stuff and what I saw for this year. First of all, I'm locked in. This doesn't affect any OG. This affects anybody who oh, that's is a, new. That's messy, though, for the new oh, yeah, players, yeah. It was like, you want to get in the club? You want to get in the club? You want to get in? Yeah, you can't. <laughs> we have a tier for you. If you're but not if you're here on already, PC. Oh, y'all eat. Oh, no, that's, they're, they just, are, they're that's pushing the you to fight. PC. Yeah, That's the fight, right? The yeah. console guy's like, bro, what's going on? These guys yeah. 11 dollars no internet. Like, yeah. It, yeah. What I tried to tell, this is what I said on Duke. I said, look, we got the reality is it's like the console guy was the wife at home. <laughs> you didn't maximize your potential. We, we love you, but we are wooing this new person. And this is the person we want. We want this PC. We, we, we look at that potential more growth there. That's what's going on. So I, I understand the console guy frustration, but that's just the reality, man. Because the PC community, they, y'all, I'll give y'all this. Y'all don't take no crap. Y'all not. You know, not paying for yeah, online access. Paying Both no PlayStation access. and Xbox are doing that. And yeah. Steve's over there, like, we're here. What's up, guys? Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and they will let the community, they will let the developers know when they are not feeling that we saw something. You know, obviously, with the PSN, with the Hell Diver situation, uh, they were yeah. like, yo, what's going on? Yeah, so, this, yeah, that, not saying that's Steve review, Steam review bombs are being overused right now for all yeah. half the time, the wrong reasons. Right. Feedback one thing, and then they actually flipped it for Hell Divers. You know, that's a moment where it's like, you messed up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But it is, yeah, the whole, you just have to figure out where your value is. Do you watch, like, I will never get rid of Max for the TV service because mm-hmm. my wife watches Big Bang or Friends to sleep nearly every single night. That is yeah. never leaving a subscription. Leaving. I'm, I do the annual and I just mm-hmm. don't worry about it. I do it once a year. But mm-hmm. but some of the other stuff I'm even debating, I'm like, how often do I watch some of the other ones depending on the prices and stuff? And it's. It's mm-hmm. all of those. Everything costs more now. It's like you've seen the jokes on Twitter mm-hmm. about, hey, I tried to reorder my Walmart order from three years ago, and it's like 300% more. It's like, what the hell? Yeah. So, yeah. It's, no, good point. It's, it, it's, it's all What's a mess. the value proposition is to you, and you have to look at it that way. Make that decision. For me, Game Pass, day one stuff is still 
completely worth it. And then, you know, all the games this year, wow. Oh, I mean, you're going to have Call Ultimate Duty. forever. I'm not worried about yeah, you. Like, like they, you have, know, they have you for life. <laughs> yeah. But, I'm, but I understand for someone who's new. Like, you, Is there you a price a point where you wouldn't? Wouldn't. Is it 25? Is it 30? Like, where is the point where you feel like That's you might question. turn it off? Because, I mean, you live on your Xbox outside. I mean, I, I pulled you to PC, but you tr- you'll yeah. you'll walk over to your couch and probably play Destiny on Xbox just because you would. So it's one of those, like, what is the point where a true, like, you know, you bleed green? Like, what is that? Yeah. I'm curious. No, for? To me, it's value. When I always say, if y'all not delivering games... Like that's why the showcase I was say she I was like yep I could see the next yeah, two if three they can get that monthly cadence then every month even if you're paying thirty you're getting a sixty dollar seventy dollar game every month yeah because yeah. I utilize it in that like path of the goddess I'm good like yeah. you know what I'm saying the altar is the game you like I'm no, good know, like, yeah. all this is game pass stuff so yeah. I'm like if you look at first party releases in conjunction with the third party stuff for a guy like me it makes sense now there's always gonna be a part where you go man that's rich ridiculous how much it's going to cost but you also got to think about inflation these subscription services always go up netflix <sighs> oh, all these things yeah. man you, yeah you got to look at the value for you so it's a, I always feels a personal decision yeah you know how much do you and, get out of x thing whatever yeah, that is so. that's it so the, for me the, to answer your question the minute cadence game releases are not happening and i'm not off. seeing like everything yeah. they showed mm-hmm. comes out for a couple of years and they're like all right we're gonna bump it up to 30 down their slates like empty you're like yeah See and you have a year <laughs> like 2022 yeah. where they were like no starfield <laughs> no Redfall. yeah he, here's these uh crackers go work this out. Yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> you're not gonna it's get like, nope, you're not, not talking to you for a month yeah, yeah. oh agree, and then they're I capping agree. how you can only go 13 months out there's yeah. no saving on i mean that's the, the thing that the writing's on the wall with that one is there's another increase coming because they don't want you oh, to be yeah. The buck tucked in too long. I mean, they're all Pen- they're all doing it right now. So it's just yeah. yeah. Be smart with Penny your money. Pitch. If you find a good value in what you spend it on, no one should tell you different. That's up to you. Yeah, that's it. Also, that's please it. don't like like pay homage to a plastic box. All of you, stop that. Whether it's a PC, a console, it doesn't matter. Dudes really out here fighting with each other. That's the part that uh, it's so dumb. Maybe real serious. Yeah, and then all the companies are oh, like, hey, you guys keep fighting. We'll take your money. Yeah, <laughs> they don't care. Yeah. They just want money, so they're all they are all corporations making money. All yeah, right, well, I'm know. going to probably take my uh, crampy calves into the other room. <laughs> Let's go, birthday boy. What you got lined up as we as we Not close a lot, out? You honestly, got lined up? Um, keep the low key. Well, my wife is in the middle of rehearsal. She will do musical theater every so often, and she kind of got brought out of retirement last year, and she's done a couple, so she's rehearsing for a show. And like tomorrow's her one day off and then she's got nine days straight of rehearsal and then her gotcha. first couple of shows and then she's been rehearsing for these days. So like tonight she's got rehearsal. I'm just going to chill. I'm going to work on my video that I'm trying to put together for first descendant tomorrow. Mm. Honestly, my wife's like, do you want to do anything tomorrow? I'm like, you need to rest. So I'm like Boy, taking me out of it. You I'll do something in August. Like when we get back from Travis's wedding, I'll get my friends together and be like, hey, do you guys want to go out for my birthday dinner now? Because her shows are like the next couple of weekends. Of, okay. It's like the 21st weekend and the 28th weekend. And then we have the wedding shortly after. So it's like we are back to back to back. Back from the dead, you're gonna get del- you're gonna get bu- you're gonna get banned. <laughs> you're gonna get funny. banned. Well done, Snake. But anyway, yeah, look, I gotta confess, man. No. The boy E put me on yeah. had the, the 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 most succulent of of steaks, and we we did it without the A one. And uh, he was very proud of me. And I had to I had to bend in the. I was like, nah, this is official. Didn't need anything. So yes, we, we we're past that now. <laughs> yep. That was a good joke, though. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that's, mm-hmm. it's going to be, she's very busy with that, and her birthday mm-hmm. was five days ago. Gotcha. Oh, so right, we right. went out last weekend for her birthday with, like, our couple pairs of friends that we have, or, like, the three couples, and we went and I had, like. I realized y'all was both the same month. I am 360 days older than her. That is wild. So there are five days we're the same age, and then I go back to old man again. So, y'all the <laughs> same sign? Uh, yeah, we're both cancers. Yo, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. That's dope. That how rare is that? Damn. That's ill. Yeah. I like that. It's kind of one of those. But uh mm-hmm. so yeah, we did that last Saturday. We did sushi and hibachi. So I mean, we That's had a nice dinner with friends for hers. Mm-hmm. I sent flowers to her rehearsal and I had the cast makes like sing happy birthday to her and surprised her. So like I got uh, her stuff done up. and you know, I made her a fun birthday cake. So I've been eating some birthday uh, cake already. So 
It's you're always already a birthday boy. Yeah, I was like, I've had, now she made me like a cinnamon roll casserole this morning. So I was like, Ooh. so it's two cans of cinnamon rolls, chop them up, put them in a pan. And then it's like a little bit of butter, a little bit of milk to kind of have everything come together. But yeah, it's a cinnamon roll casserole. How do you go wrong? I love cinnamon rolls. Absolutely. Yes, All this food talk is making you hungry. I can do a yeah, podcast about, about food. Hungry. Oh, yeah, he could definitely do that. <laughs> I, yeah. I, love, I love food. food. Chrono Trigger. Yeah. A super NES podcast. Movies. NES podcast. Movies. Jimmy and I can talk about movies until we're blue yeah, in the face. Like, shout out to Jimmy. Um, mm-hmm. Now, thank you guys. But I was like, Travis is traveling. I know we didn't traveling. mention him because we went straight into the interview. Yeah, but he business. is traveling for um, stuff. Stuff. Yep. <laughs> and probably traveling in the future for stuff yes. as well so yes. the biggest thing is i know he's not here to hear it mm. but and it sounds stupid to say this but i will tell you guys growing up birthdays were not that exciting whether mm. when i went to college my birthday never turned into anything that great it's always been a little surprising that i have had more wishes for birthdays just having been part of the podcast and this online community yeah. and stuff like that, that feel halfway more genuine than some of the fake friends that I had along the way in my life, That's whether real. it was like That's working real. at a restaurant and like hung out with people all the time. And then you move away, but you try and call and connect with them and they just stop calling back and you lose the friends. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, it's tired of being a one way relationship. Yep. And it's like, and that's kind of thing. It's like when it comes to being an online, anything, you got to draw boundaries because it's like, you guys don't me. I don't know you, but it is, it is still just the gesture that feels more genuine half the time for people being like, Hey, I see that kind of podcast like every other week, have a good birthday, dude. That feels more genuine than like half of early in my life. And it seems stupid to say that, but it's like getting more birthday wishes. And also it's like being married, obviously is amazing part two, but it's just like the online, the online, Cause it's like, I've talked to quite a few of these people over so many different things, but it's, I don't know. It's just one of those things that I've enjoyed these kind of birthdays surprisingly more than I would have guessed. And yeah, I mean, in part of you and Travis and my wife and my close friends, I, I can't trade that type of stuff, but well, we everybody in chat you. and the comments and everything else, the Twitter wishes and all of those things, they actually mean a lot more than you guys think. Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for all of those because those little moments where I'm crying, talking about Raya and everything else. It's like, I share moments that even some of my closest friends like truly don't even see because they don't watch the Mm. show and stuff like that. And I'm Mm. breaking down talking about Raya and you guys are here for that. And those are those moments where you guys have seen me at some of my, some of my worst too. And you still come hang out. So thank you guys for everything. I think that's where I gotta, I gotta wrap it up for me. (laughs) We love you. E we know that. Big Love heart, you guys too. Good person. And um, no, it's dope because I, I think that like, you know, like you said, as content creators, you need that because you don't realize, you know, people listen to you every day. You're a part of someone's life every day. When you make a video, you do a podcast, you know what I'm saying? So there's that connection. And I think that's the difference now. Like this generation, we connect to people through the, you know, through content. And, and yo, know, you help. You don't realize someone sent me one of the nicest text messages yesterday. Uh, at least two days ago, a DM. And it was like, I just want to thank you for everything you do. Like, you don't understand. You helped me go through this condition. You, I've been, you know, going through uh, the hospital for stuff and, you know, listening to you guys. Like, that's real. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, that's the effect you have on people. You never forget that. And like you said, it, it's so cool to get you. Sometimes we don't appreciate it enough. And like, to see that love come in. Yeah, you got to receive it, man. It's no. well deserved. No, I will say I got a DM recently. I'm not going to call out the name, but I got a DM and it was a thank for content type stuff. <laughs> it very much solidifies my like old man demographic on my YouTube channel. Like if you want to look at the demographic, like little pyramid of where it's like younger, older, older, and then younger, older and older. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you can push mine probably a little lower. Mine is like one or two decades lower than the average Minecraft viewer because here it is. Yeah. Not sure you read these, but thank you for all your work on Destiny. The wife and I get a lot out of them and watch regularly. They say they're gamer tags. We are both over 60. So if you want wow. mature gamers to play with sometime, drop us an invite. And I kid you not, I'll be live streaming or whatever and I'm checking age and I say I'm 40. Half of my chat's like, that's cute. Mm-hmm. I have no idea <laughs> why so many people that hang out in my chat and my streams and my comments, I've, I have found the mature gamer audience. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. And I love you Whoa. guys, but it's always like, it is like, 
obviously there's a lot more kids watching some of the Minecraft mm-hmm. stuff, but it is just funny that I have I have found that demographic sometimes. Yeah, yeah baby, no baby problem. Montes, exactly. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm Listen. the youngin of some of the people that watch. Yes. And I'm going, all right. <laughs> I know for a fact executives listen to you that are trying to get back into Destiny, and I'll shout one out. He, he knows it. He, he knows it. Bill Stewart listens to you. Like, he, religiously, because, again, your style of you don't talk down to the audience and assume that they know everything, and you make, you're very specific. Okay, this is what you got to do, and it's not intimidating. You know how Destiny can be intimidating. It's just, and you just break it down in a very cool way. So the older demographic is like, yo, we like him. He, he talking to us, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, hey, if you've been away, this is what you got to do. Start here. You're so meticulous with that kind of stuff, and they love that stuff, man. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for, um, as I said, it's going to be a chill birthday. I'm going to go see uh, Quiet Place prequel this weekend while my Ooh. wife, my wife literally rehearses 2 to 10.30 Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. That is no. her weekend. So I'm like me, I'm just going to kind of hang out and chill. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's dope. But yeah, it's going to be chill. We'll do some stuff later. But mm-hmm. I will tell all of you guys that thank you. It, thank you <laughs> just for mm-hmm. truly everything. But the fact that this journey has been going on as long as it has been. Still surprising because <laughs> my degree is so far removed from what I'm doing now and to have <laughs> a chance to do any of this and obviously a wife that helps make any of this possible. Yeah, we're we're very thankful over here. So thank you guys. <laughs> 41 mm-hmm. years old will be official later on today because I know the time nice. I, I know the time I was born. Ooh, nice night night, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a night baby, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it was East Coast time, so it's in about. What would that be? About four hours. Four hours? Yeah. Oh, so you're going like around on a 7 p.m. Eastern kind of day? Ish, yeah. Ish? Yeah, yeah. I was like 9, 9 p.m. on a Monday. Oh. On a Monday I was born. Mm-hmm. 41 of the baby face. See, baby I shaved. Face. I shaved for yes. the podcast. And then baby what you got to do, gang. you got to find one of those uh, aftershaves that's like a little bit of moisturizer. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the only part of me like this that will probably have moisturizer on my body because I'm, I'm not one of those like... I will say, like, mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. there's a joke. Some comedian does it really well. And it's mm-hmm. like they joke about, hey, guys, you know, you can use lo- lotion outside of and they kind of circle the crotch zone <laughs> as a joke. You can use Yo. lotion out of there. And like if you got like ashy elbows or anything <laughs> like that, it's like, you know, it's actually good for you to do that type of stuff. Yeah, and we it's got, uh, we need those over here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's they like one of those things. Beard bontis. They beard. You never gonna okay. let that thing go. I did it one time for a month. I did no shave November one time. Now, I also didn't keep or trim the beard because I was just letting it grow. I wasn't Let shaving. It grow out. Yeah. If I ever do that again, but my wife is not a fan, so it probably won't happen. Jared. I would need to, for one, beard oil. Holy crap, that made a difference because I have never itched my face so much in my entire life. Oh, that was awful. But about yeah. halfway through, I was like, I got to do something. So I looked up beard oil. Mm-hmm. I got some and I started putting it on. That made it way more manageable. So that was huge. Um, funny thing is right now, I don't know if you guys can see the grays literally stop here. So I have uh, the Mr. Fantastic sideburns going on oh, right got, now. Oh, you do. I got the <laughs> Fantastic got the fan, sideburns the fantastic. going on right now. So I'm pretty yeah, sure it would be here. a salt and pepper through here. Yeah, yeah you too. Right here. And if I let it grow, yeah, then they, 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 they like, hey, what's up? Remember how old you are? <laughs> yeah, when's the I last time you grew, grew your hair because I want to see your yeah. hair actually grow man oh my god I can't stand it I can't stand it it gets <laughs> too ridiculous I hate it so yeah I, I don't even allow people to get that opportunity I think I did it one time back in the day I was like I hate this <laughs> <laughs> anyway salute oh. to everybody yeah. yeah well I'm gonna go have some lunch mm-hmm. I'm sure you might be yes. doing the same or a little bit um, mm-hmm. yeah that was fantastic interview. Thank you all for being yeah, here. Hopefully you enjoyed Jimmy. the chat afterwards. And if you're looking for the archive, I'm going to post this thing up pretty much everywhere I can. The one on my channel, I still, I don't know if I'll leave that one up. The link will still work, so you'll be able to watch it once I edit it, the opening mm-hmm. down. But I will put it on the Last Word Podcast YouTube channel, which is a little harder to find, so I'll have direct links to that one. On my community page, I'll put that one up. And then also for the audio feed. So you guys will be able to find it just about everywhere. So thanks for sharing this one, Cog. It was a good one, special one. So thank you, Travis. Safe travels, of course. And we will actually be seeing you soon. I got my my suit jacket. Um, I just ordered that separate. (laughs) I ordered because I didn't want to buy a whole suit right now. I'm not. Yeah, so you got a jacket. So the problem is right now, it's like I know I need to like trim up the belly. But it's like, but I have been 
working the upper body more. So my old oh, stuff so was yes. not going to fit. So it's this whole thing. And then I'm like, it's mm-hmm. the whole thing. Oh, you want to give somebody a hug and rip out your jacket in the back. So I had, I just bought a bigger suit jacket and then I'm just going to do a dress shirt and pants. That'll work for now. Gotcha. I'm mm-hmm. not going to go full tailored suit or anything like that. Streamers mm-hmm. have legs. Yes. Streamers have legs. Yeah. The boy got yeah, he, the calves is all DJ. Step the game up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if yours isn't cramping, you're doing better than I am. So yeah, enjoy. <laughs> Now, um, but yeah, we'll be seeing Travis soon. So we'll have uh, yeah. a little time off there. Yeah, well, I'm off away. Yeah. All right. That's all I know. Look for a first ascendant video from me. Probably a once human guide if I can do it. And then I'll be working on Flintlock. May or, maybe or maybe not. I can say that. But yeah, that's that's one too. Nice. All right, Next everybody. Thank you very much. And for episode number 302. Thank you, Jimmy. The interview was fantastic. Legend. Hope to have you back, man. That was that was a blast. <laughs> yeah, Infinity. Why didn't we get to get my Infinity War bag with him too? Like, no, there's so much, so much so we wanted. Much. To like, at some point, I'm gonna dog. be like, all right, you got like two hours because we got a lot of stuff we got to talk about in here. Yeah, so. he, he, he he blessed us though for real. Yep. So thank you all very much. Have a great one. Last word. Hold on. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> for episode number three hundred two, you guys have been fantastic, and for this episode officially, it has been. The last, the last word. word. Now you can stop Audacity. Dope. All right, let me get Audacity. Stop. <laughs>